Welcome to Firefox News Online, live on Mixler.com. The rules apply at all times. No personal attacks, threats, or hate speech will be tolerated at any time. If you commit to these acts, you will be blocked and your chat deleted. Also, the panel for tonight's discussion has been pre-selected. There is no number to call. With that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride as Firefox News Online on Mixler.com begins right now. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Now it's time for Talking Points with me, George Sinzer. America, I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little sick and tired of hearing impeach, 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 impeach Donald Trump. Now, for the life of me, it's just reckless to even think that they could do that when there's nothing, and I repeat, nothing done wrong. Let me see if I can explain it. According to the United States Constitution, under Article 2, Section 4, it states, the President, Vice President, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. To my knowledge, President Donald Trump has not, I repeat, has not committed treason nor has he accepted or attempted to bribe anyone or other high crimes and misdemeanors. He has not been formally charged with obstruction of justice. He has not been charged with any kind of misdemeanors that I'm aware of. He has not been convicted of any high crimes and misdemeanors that I'm aware of. The Constitution also allows for involuntary removal from office. Now, the president, the vice president, cabinet secretaries, and other executive officers, as well as judges, may be impeached by the House of Representatives and tried in the Senate. Any official convicted by impeachment is immediately removed from office. The Senate may also choose to bar the removed official from holding any federal office in the future. No other punishments may be inflicted 
pursuant to the impeachment proceeding, but the convicted party remains liable to trial and punishment in the courts for civil and criminal charges. So this incompetent, ridiculous moron, Representative Brad Sherman, Democrat from California, and Representative Al Green, Democrat from Texas, co-sponsored the action together. So, and I'm going to read the story that I have on this. Uh, I find it laughable that these two Democrats, these two Democrats are all, all by themselves going to impeach the President of the United States of America, Donald Trump, all by themselves, because they're sure as shit not going to get one Republican to side with them. I'm serious. I, I don't understand this. There's got to be a logical explanation for everything. Well, when it comes to Democrats, let me think about that a minute. Uh, no, there's not. Democrats have no logic to them whatsoever. These liberal idiots on the left actually think that they're going to impeach Donald Trump. Good luck. Brad Sherman and Al Green, the lone two Democrats sponsoring the articles of impeachment against Donald Trump, President of the United States of America. Oh, this is so laughable. This is so ridiculous, so retarded, so asinine, so fucking completely ridiculous. Uh, does anybody really believe that these two Democrats can get the president impeached? Oh, well, wait a minute. No, Maxine Waters might even agree with them. So there's possibly three, three people. Unfucking real. Okay. Brad Sherman, Al Green. And even Maxine Waters. I'm not going to leave her out of this. You three are absolutely, positively the stupidest fucking people on the planet, bar none. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. And I'm entitled to my opinion. But I think there's a lot of people that might agree with me on that. Seriously. There's a lot of people out there who would probably agree with me in a New York minute and not hesitate. Even if they're Democrats. And I'd be shocked if, a de if one Democrat agreed with me. I mean, we already know that Nancy Pelosi is completely a space cadet. So, you know, come on, really? You gotta be fucking kidding. Gotta be kidding. There's also one other aspect to all this, one that I'm sure not many people have given any thought to. The impeachment proceedings, I don't know, there's something wrong with this picture. There is. Who are Brad Sherman and Al Green? They're both Democrats. Sherman's from California, the land of fruits and nuts and all that. And who in the hell is Al Green? I mean, he's a Democrat. He's from Texas. Well, I really don't think there's too much to look for. But I'm going to look them up during the course of the broadcast. And I guarantee, I guarantee this is not going to happen. There's no fucking way that Representatives Sherm and Green are going to get their impeachment. No, not going to happen. Uh-uh. No. That'll go down the drain faster than Drano. Believe it. 
Hashtag FFNOP. Hashtag FFNOP. Use that hashtag to trend this all over the globe on Twitter and Facebook right now. And with that having been said, it is now time for the rest of the story. I like this part. Don't you? <laughs> all right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. We're here. We're live, large, and in charge once again, America. But only on Mixler and YouTube tonight, not on Blog Talk Radio. I decided to give Blog Talk Radio the night off. <laughs> At least tonight. I'm going to do it again tomorrow night. Because this way, it's a little simpler. It's a little easier. Don't have to go through the whole rigmarole like I normally do. So tonight and tomorrow night, it's just going to be on Mixler and YouTube. This, you know... I figured a little change-up never hurts, right? Right. So, Skype connections. If you're on my list, I'll bring you on. Ain't that just great? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now, ooh, gun swinger. It's my buddy gunslinger, Jock. <laughs> Oop, you hear that? That's the loud beep. The beep, the beep, the beep, the beep. Hello, gun. Yeah, I'm here, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> you're there. <laughs> well, God, I hope you're there, you know. I mean, holy Toledo. weren't there that that would be awfully bad for me because then I'd be talking to I wouldn't I don't know who I'd be talking to and tonight for some silly reason my camera for Skype is working not that I'm complaining mind you I'm actually very happy it is. That means when people come on, they get to see my ugly mug. Well, it's not an ugly mug. I just happen to say that because I can. I can say that about myself. Why? Because I'm a goofball. Anyway, so... Gunslinger, I gotta ask you something. Have you ever heard of this Democrat slug named Al Green? Gun. I'm not. I, the, I, I may have heard it in passing, but uh, you said he was a demo rat, so. Yep, he's a demo rat. Yeah, a demo rat. I don't even know what area of Texas he represents or whatever. You have to look him up. Well, let's see. Just for shits and giggles. Yes, for the fuck of it. Let me see. Go to Google. I'll do it by voice search. Let's see if this actually will work. Al Green, Democrat, Texas. According to Wikipedia, Al Green is an American lawyer, politician, and the U.S. Oh, representative brother. from Texas's 9th Congressional District, serving since 2005. Now, folks, you heard what, what Google, the voice of Google, just said. Uh, Gunslinger did not, I don't think. I hate when that happens. 
either it, either they either it plays or it doesn't play. I didn't anyway. hear either either or. Okay, here's the deal. Al Green, he's a he's a lawyer, politician, and U.S. representative from Texas' ninth congressional district, serving since 2005. The district includes most of southwestern Houston, including most of that city's share of Fort Bend County. So, he has not been in Congress very long, only about, what, 12 years at best? And he, along with Brad Sherman from California, also a demo rat, decided they're going to file articles of impeachment against President Trump. <laughs> That's funny. I, <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> How can you file articles of impeachment, articles of impeachment, when he ain't done a fucking thing to be impeached? Are these people crazy? These people have absolutely gone bonkers in the head. They, 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 I mean, Maxine Waters is bad enough. Now you got two more idiots that are trying something. Well, these people, I've never seen such a meltdown of the Democratic Party as I have witnessing today. Crazy. Oh, believe me, it's, this is nothing compared to what I've seen over the years, but this is the most laughable situation in the, I've ever seen th thus far. I mean, Al Green and uh, Brad Sherman co-sponsored this, uh, the article, th th this, uh, this thing. I mean, I've got the sto I got the story from the Hill. When I first saw it, I, it was, it was actually posted on SarahPalin.com. So I decided, okay, here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to go and see what I can find out. So I did a quick search. And guess what I found out? It's true. They did. Here's what the house, here's what the hill.com wrote about it. Representative Brad Sherman, Democrat from California, formally inter formal formally blah, 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 tongue tied folks. Bear with me. It's Wednesday. It's the it's hump day. That's what they call Wednesday. Hump day. Like really formally introduced an article of impeachment against President Trump on Wednesday that accuses the president of obstructing justice during the federal investigation of Russia's 2016 election interference. This is the first time a lawmaker has offered an impeachment article against Trump and it comes as Democrats have debated whether it is politically wise to press the case for impeachment at this time. A majority vote in the House, currently controlled by Republicans, is required to impeach a president. Republicans have a 46-seat advantage. White House spokeswoman Sarah Huckabee Sanders slammed the move. She told reporters Wednesday at an off-camera briefing, I think that is utterly and completely ridiculous and a political game at its worst. In filing his impeachment article, Sherman argues that Trump's abrupt firing of James Comey as FBI director in May amounts to obstruction, ob obstructing justice and high crimes and misdemeanors. Amid the probes of whether Trump's campaign colluded with the Russian government to swing the election. That Trump's abrupt firing of James Comey as, F as FBI director in May, I must, oh, the, the paragraph, part of the paragraph repeated. Sorry, folks. Moving on. 
He cites Comey's allegations that Trump pressured him to drop the FBI's investigation into ousted former White House National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, as well as Trump's shifting story on why he fired Comey. I lost my place here. Hold on a second. Ah. In all of this, Donald John Trump has acted in a manner contrary to his trust as president and subversive of con- and subversive of constitutional government. To the great prejudice of the cause of law and justice and to the manifest injury of the people of the United States. Wherefore, Donald John Trump, by such conduct, warrants impeachment and trial and removal from office, the article of impeachment states. Sherman's article is is unlikely to succeed in the GOP-controlled House, but the California Democrat said he hoped introducing an article of impeachment would serve as a warning to the Trump White House and establish a legislative vehicle in which... Uh, excuse me, vehicle in the long shot event that Republicans endorse forcing Trump out of office. Sherman so far has only one supporter on his article of impeachment, Representative Al Green, Democrat from Texas, who previously called for Trump's impeachment on the House floor. Democratic leaders in the House reacted with caution to Sherman's move, most fell back on the argument that Congress should set up an, 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 an independent commission to investigate Russia's meddling in last year's presidential election and possible links between Trump's team and Moscow. Leader Pelosi has repeatedly called for an outside independent commission to get to the bottom of Trump's connection to Russia's interference in our election and to examine ways to protect the integrity of our democracy from foreign meddling in the future. Ashley Atin, I'm not sure if I pronounced it right, a spokeswoman for the House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, Democrat from California, said in a statement, Recently, Revel- revelations coupled with the president's unprecedented campaign of dishonesty and secrecy give greater urgency to the need for House Republicans to bring a vote to the floor immediately to establish an outside independent commission. Introduction of the article of impeachment comes a day after Trump's eldest son, Donald Trump Jr., released a chain of emails showing his effort to meet with a Russian lawyer claiming to have damaging information about Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton during last year's campaign. Some critics charge that the emails are evidence of collusion between Trump's campaign and the Russians. This is obviously very high-level and sensitive information, but is part of, a, but is part of Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump an intermediary working to set up the meeting, wrote in an email. Sherman drew ire from fellow House, de- from f- from fellow House Democrats last month when he began circulating a draft article of impeachment and suggested he might force a floor vote on it. Democratic leaders and most rank-and-file members aren't eager to aggressively push impeachment at this point. One leadership ally, Representative Michael Capano, Democrat from Massachusetts, stood up during a Democratic caucus meeting to say Sherman's effort could hurt the party. Pelosi and House Democratic Caucus Chairman Joseph Crowley from New York backed up Capano at the time, saying Democrats should focus on issues like Republicans' efforts to repeal Obamacare under House rules, any member can force a vote on what's known on what's known 
as a privileged resolution that argues an issue concerns the dignity and integrity of the institution. House Republicans could easily reject the resolution if Sherman were to force a vote, but it would put all members on record regarding Trump's impeachment. Rank-and-file Democrats generally think it's premature to start talking about impeachment and don't want to take positions on Brad it Brad at Sherman this stage. Brad formally introduced an article of impeachment against President Trump on Wednesday that accuses the president Excuse of me. obstructing... Uh, stop the uh, video from playing because it's interfering with my my reading. Now I got to find my place again. As I was saying, rank and file Democrats generally think it's premature to start talking about impeachment and don't want to take positions on it at this stage. Sherman said he never expected that he would want to elevate Vice President Pence to the Oval Office. I served with Mike Pence in Congress for 12 years, and I disagree with him on just about everything, Sherman said in a statement. I never dreamed I would author a measure that would put him in the White House. However, Sherman said he wants to begin a long process to protect our country from abuse of power, obstruction of justice, and impulsive, ignorant incompetence. So, so these two idiots, these two morons, Al Green, from Democrat from Texas, and Brad Sherman from California, think it's a good idea to introduce articles of impeachment against Donald Trump for obstruction of justice. <laughs> And alleging high crimes and misdemeanors. Are you fucking kidding me? This is so laughable. I mean, what do you think, Gunslinger? I mean, my God, man. This is so fucking stupid. Well, I mean, it, it's... As we always know, they're going to try to do anything. Obviously, it's not going to fly. I mean, that... the. That makes no sense at all. There was I read an article earlier today. There was a up in the Antarctic, I think it is. There's a 2,300 square mile iceberg that broke off, biggest one in history, I think. That makes more sense, a fucking iceberg, a ice cube breaking off, than what these idiots are doing, because these people are idiots. At least an iceberg is not an idiot. It's a big hunk of frozen water. Okay, ice. But they, they have no, no merit, they have no grounds, they have nothing. They just want to get on the bandwagon because you know that the Democrats and the Republicans are never going to mix. It's like trying to mix oil and water, try it, you ain't going to mix you ain't going to mix them, okay? No matter how much you shake and bake them, you ain't going to fucking mix them, okay? So these people have, again, a set, that's that mental disorder that should be in the medical books as liberalism. Brain eating disorder. Thank God this some bitch ain't in this area. He done. Let's hopefully he'll go swimming in the ocean and the sharks are hungry. Let's put it that way. It's it's mind boggling, gunslinger. It really is mind boggling. I mean, to think that 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 these two moron Democrats are actually going to get somewhere with this. I see Billy joined us in the chat room. Billy, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, hopefully you'll join us on Skype soon. Oh, I'm going to, just for shits and giggles, I'm going to try and see if Bill, if Mike's uh, available. So I want to bring him in on the conversation. God knows this is going to be, you know, this is, this is the most laughable situation I have ever seen in my life. I mean... There has to be, there, there, there's got to be more than meets the eye in this. It's, a, it, it's political suicide to think that they're going to succeed at this, you know? I mean, granted, 
you know. I give these these bozos an E for effort. I do. I, I give them E for effort because, you know, I don't know. It, this is just nuts as far as I'm concerned. And America, I'm going to I'm going to say something to you and I, and I hope you 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 you're paying close attention to what I say in this. And that being that um you know if you're um, if you're a Republican <laughs> and by the way, this goes for Democrats too. I can't leave them out of this. If if you think this is the most ridiculous thing that they could pull, knowing it's not going to succeed in a Republican-controlled House, you know, tell your representatives, vote against it. Don't go for this. It's stupid. It's absolutely the most ridiculous ridiculous thing the Democrats have pulled to date. And, and and like it says in the Hill article, and a lot of Democrats are not really wanting to push this because it could hurt the Democratic Party. That's the smartest thing they've said all year thus far. It really is. So, I don't know, Democrats, you got to get your head out of your ass. You really do. Yeah, let me check my Skype here and see what's, see if anybody's, no, oh, this is unusual. Surprised nobody else is wanting to join yet. <clears throat> but Gunslinger, th tell me something. Is it just my imagination? Or by this action, are Democrats being becoming desperate? I mean, it seems to me like it's showing desperation on the part of these two Democrats. Because they're the only two backing this bill. None of the other members of, 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 of the Democratic Party are, are backing this up. But, And this is just my opinion. I, if I were if I were the leadership in that party, I would be telling these two jokers, withdraw your 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 withdraw this. Just pull it, because we're not going to go there right now, because they know they've got nothing. Zippo, zilch, nada. But of course, it all depends on whether or not, you know, they... You know, they actually have a brain in their head. Which we know they don't, obviously. So, I don't know. 
Billy, you're sitting there listening to all this. Do you have any? Do you have any thoughts you want to share with it? Well, while he's thinking about that, you know, like I said, uh, if you want to cover this story we're here in a minute, this happened three years ago, four years ago. It's this Vietnam vet that was nearly killed by cops here in Texas for openly carrying, wins $175,000 and gets his guns back. Yay. There's a link in the chat room. Yeah, I, I see that. All right, we'll get, we'll get to that in a minute. Ah, Billy just sat down in front of the computer. Did you hear? Have you been listening, though? Well, let me bring my friend Tim on the, on the broadcast. Uh, Tim is my buddy of over 40, over 40 years. Uh, I'm going to throw this at him and, 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 and see, see what he thinks. Tim, first of all, welcome to the broadcast. Oh, thank you. Ah, okay, Billy. Then you're you're in. Then you're, it's fortuitous because now you get to hear what what, what what I'm talking about. Seems two Democrats decided they were going to co-sponsor articles of impeachment against President Trump today, and. They are Representative Brad Sherman, Democrat from California, and Al Green, Democrat from Texas. They decided to put articles of impeachment up, and the claim, you're going to love this, people. You're going to love this. I'm going to read, I'm going to read this again because it is, you know, this is this is this is laughable. All right. They introduced Brad Sherman was the was the per, was the guy who uh, formally introduced an article of impeachment against President Trump today that accuses the president of obstructing justice during the federal investigation of Russia's 2016 election interference. Now, this is the first time a lawmaker has offered an impeachment article against Trump, and it comes as Democrats have debated whether it is politically wise to press the case for impeachment at this time. Now, I'm going to skip a few paragraphs here. In the filing, in filing his impeachment article, Sherman argues that Trump's abrupt firing of James Comey as FBI director in May amounts to obstructing justice and high crimes and misdemeanors amid the probes of whether Trump's campaign colluded with the Russian government to swing the election. <coughs> <laughs> in all of this Donald John Trump has acted in a manner contrary to his trust as president and a, and subversive of constitutional government to the great prejudice of the cause of law and justice and to the manifest injury of the people of the United States wherefore Donald Trump Donald John Trump, by such conduct, warrants impeachment and trial and removal from office. The article of impeachment states. Okay, first of all, and let me skip, go back on a paragraph here. Sherman cites Comey's allegations that Trump pressured him to drop the FBI's investigation into ousted former White House National Security Advisor Michael Flynn as well as Trump's shifting story on why he fired Comey. So, this moron 
And Al Green, who's co-sponsoring this this uh, article of impeachment against President Trump, <laughs> honestly, I'm sitting here trying to figure out: Are they? Do they realize that they're committing political suicide and perjury? Because no formal charges have been made against Donald Trump for obstruction of justice. And what high crimes and misdemeanors did he allegedly commit that he's been con- that he's been charged with formally? Can anyone possibly answer that? It's not worth the paper it's printed on. Well, I'm going to bring Billy on board. Billy, you there? Hello. Yep. So, what do you say to all this? They always bring up a pinch me. He's the president right now. Hmm? Hang on, let me turn this. Here, I'll, hear I'll, I'm gonna. I can hear you now. I didn't hear you a second ago. Okay. Um. Yeah. How many? How many times did they ask? You know, they're like, "Oh, we got to impeach Trump. We got to impeach Trump." You know, it's every little rumor, um, just any little teeny bit of slightest hope. Okay, that they they, they cling on to. So I don't really. Pay too much attention to what they say, but especially when they say impe- impeachment, it's fucking ridiculous. They wanted to go after Trump since day one. The Democrats have been screaming. Impeach, 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 impeach. You know, I'm not surprised. I really not, you know, because, uh, you know, I mean, look at uh, uh, Bimbo Maxine Waters from California. She's another on the impeachment bandwagon. I'm surprised she didn't bring it up. Oh, she she wants she wants him impeached, Tim. He she definitely wants him impeached, but she wasn't brave enough to do what Sherman and Green have done. But here's Green. where their here's where their articles of impeachment are going to fall flat and fall flat real hard. The House is controlled by the Republican Party. The Republicans are going to look at this and go, "Are you?" fucking kidding and if the democrats should if sherman or green should decide to force the vote it's going to go down in flames and the other members of the democratic party know this they know it's going to it's going to even hurt the party so the bill the bill is dead on arrival so it's like yeah well i'm no go ahead you know i'm i'm not surprised that the democrats are trying it i'm surprised that it take it took them this long to try to come up with some lame excuse to try. Um, I, I guess it's a question of, uh, you know, I mean, the thing is DOA. I mean, this it'll be shot down in the House. It probably won't even, well, it won't even reach the Senate. It'll be dead on arrival in the House. No, it could, could well, first of all, it's not a bill. It's an art, it's articles of impeachment. It's, it's, it has to pass in in the house first which it won't right. do it will not pass the house because the the republican party controls the house there's no there there's no way they're going they're going to they're going to try and do that no now, it's 
it won't pass. No, of course not. Now, joining us on the line also is Mike. Uh, Mike, how you doing? Good. Sorry about the delay. Everybody was... Yo, Mike. No big, no big. Yeah, you're, in, you're just in time because we're talking about an, the introduction by Brad Sherman and Al Green, Democrats, Sherman from California and Green from Texas, who have introduced in, in Congress articles of impeachment against Donald Trump. Again. No, this is the first time they've actually introduced articles and actual articles of impeachment against him on the House floor. They've oh, talked sure about they it, but they haven't beginning. actually done this yet I'm sure until they today. Had a generic, a generic set of impeachment articles, just sitting and waiting. I don't see how I don't see how they're going to justify it. I don't see how they're going to even how they can even think they're going to get anywhere with it. But you know, on top of it, you know, the only reason they're doing it is for it's just Hollywood, man. They just want to show to their constituents, to all the anti-Trumpers out there, that look, we're doing something about it. But you idiots don't really understand the system. You don't understand how the government works. But you're going to be impressed because we're doing something about it, even though nothing will ever happen. Well, here's here's the thing. He introduced, Brad Sherman introduced uh, the, an article of impeachment against President Trump and accuses the president of obstructing justice during the federal investigation of Russia's 2016 election interference. Now it goes further, now a, few, a couple of paragraphs down, it says, in filing his impeachment article, Sherman argues that Trump's abrupt firing of James Comey as FBI director in May amounts to obstructing justice and high crimes and misdemeanors amid the probes of whether Trump's campaign colluded with the Russian government to swing the election. But it was already proven, and this was discussed way back, that the president has the right to fire and replace the director of the FBI anytime he wants to. Yeah, but the Democrats and don't accept have- that. And he doesn't have to have a reason. And none of the other presidents who've done it before him have needed to have a reason or required to have a reason. So, you know, sorry, it it wouldn't be nice in your mind if the world worked the way you want it to. But it isn't. The world and the government has different rules that it goes by, not your rules. It's not Burger King, baby. No. (laughs) That's true. You're not going to get it your way. (laughs) Good point, Billy. Yeah. And where's the beef? It's not in your fucking junk strap, I'll tell you that. It, you don't have it. You don't have the power to do it. You, you people don't. You're wasting the taxpayers' money doing this. But it's nothing but theater. That's but all it is. Right. What? I'm looking at something that said it's put up an hour ago. You will not believe what Senator Rand Paul said at... Uh, well, Rand Paul said at a press conference regarding health care bill. I'm surprised that you had this, you now this politician from Texas. Where's this guy from Austin? Where's Gunslinger? Maybe he might know who this guy is. Uh, I already looked up that information. Houston um, or Austin? Hang on a second there, Mike. I'll get you that information because I looked it up just a moment ago. California, we can understand that whole state and everybody Al, in it. All right, uh, Al Green is, uh, is, is, the, is from Texas' 9th Congressional District. Uh, he's been serving since 2005. Uh, the district includes most of southwestern Houston, including most of that city's share of Fort Bend County. What did I tell you? Houston or Austin? I knew it was going to be one of the two. He's a liberal. Well, he is a Democrat, so uh, that's kind of a given. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's turning into a sick joke, and these people are embarrassing themselves, but their constituents will keep hiring them, uh, voting them in. And, uh, but, you know, hey, but the funny thing is they have to work together and have a relationship with other politicians that are in Washington. And by marking themselves as retards, 
that it's going to be harder for them to do their job and function and bring the bacon home to their constituents because less people are going to be willing to work with them. So keep it up, man. You know, you can hang out with Schumer. How much have we heard out of Schumer lately? Last thing he bitched about was that snortable chocolate. That's what he was on the new kick for. He shut up about Trump, didn't he? Well, according to this article from The Hill, Democratic leaders in, in the House reacted with caution to Sherman's move. Most fell back on the argument that Congress should set up an independent commission to investigate Russia's meddling in last year's presidential election. Nancy Pelosi repeated the, re- repeatedly called for an outside independent commission. And... Basically, the Democrats, you know, they're worried about the, something like this, you know, being a, a vote being forced. Now, now, Sherman did draw the ire from fellow Democrats last month when he began circulating a draft article of impeachment and suggested he might force a floor vote on it. Now, Democratic leaders and most rank-and-file members aren't eager to, appre- to aggressively push impeachment at this point. One leadership ally, Michael Capano, Democrat from Massachusetts, stood up during a Democratic caucus meeting to say Sherman's efforts could hurt the party. And he's right. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know where the, what these two assholes were thinking, but they certainly weren't thinking with any brain matter. Let's be the first to do it. That way we could say we were the ones who went after Trump after his throat and demanded that he there be impeachment trial. And, and, and what's funny is, where's Maxine Waters, the big cheerleader in all this? I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? The minute the minute these other liberals see that this isn't getting any traction, they're not gonna jump on the bandwagon. They're going to bail. They'll turn their backs on this, these guys. And then quietly, you'll see it disappear. And it'll even disappear from the news. Yeah, and, and, and it, if, if by some stupid move, Sherman p- forces the vote, it's going to go down in flames. Yeah. And that's going to make the Democrats look even stupider than they already do. Yeah. That's, that's the sad reality. But I damn near fell on my um, fell out of my chair laughing because the first place I noticed it wasn't the hill.com. It was on sarahpalin.com. Oh. So I had to go and and take and, and track it down to see if I could find a different uh, take on it and that's when I found the hill article. No. Now, Flycatch is in the chat room. By the way, hello, Fly. Good to see you. I just saw Julie's name pop up. Is she in there? And Boyd? Uh, Are they in the chat? Well, they're not in the chat room, but if they're on Skype, I'll grab them. I just saw Julie's name came up, but I didn't see what else it said. It just popped up on my screen. Well, I'll grab Julie, and then I'll get her thoughts on this. I haven't seen Boyd pop up yet on uh, Skype. Julie. Hello, Julie. Hi. Hi. Hey, you want a good laugh? Mm, I don't know. What is that? Two Democrats. Al Green from, from Texas and Brad Sherman from California introduced articles of impeachment against Donald Trump today. On what grounds? Well, let's it, on the grounds that he what they they're claiming uh, obstruction of justice during the federal investigation of Russia's 2016 election interference, and to they're saying in the filing. Sherman argues that Trump's abrupt firing of James Comey as FBI director in May amounts to obstructing justice and high crimes and misdemeanors 
amid the probes of whether Trump's campaign colluded with the Russian government to swing the election. See, see the way it's worded, it's, you, you can tell that, it, that it's all bullshit. It's, yeah. so, it's stuff for people like Stephen Colbert, if you want to listen to his ass, okay? And he, you know, 10 minutes he's doing fucking monologue on this shit, all right, with uh, Trump Jr., Okay, because there's still an investigation going on with the uh, Russian investigation. Okay, there's still an investigation going on here. There's still an investigation. Going on. No conclusions have been made yet. Nothing has been proved yet. So guess what, man? You came too fast. You're what's called a two seconder. It's bullshit. All these investigations are still going on. These two senators decide to come to a conclusion. Why they're still going on? Yeah, these two, the these two congressmen came to that, bullshit. decided this. I mean, you guys buy into this bullshit, and it distracts you from, like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't, look, there's investigations going on. Wait a minute, Billy, I'm not, so buying, into, I'm not buying into the bullshit, because I, I see it for what it is, just that, mm. bullshit. Right. But yes. it's still good for a hell of a, of a fucking laugh, because... When you stop to think about it, what are they? What are they? What are they proving? They're proving that by introducing this article of impeachment against President Trump, they know full well it's gonna it's gonna fall flat on its face, and it's gonna and if they force a vote, it's gonna be squashed right there on the spot because the right. Republicans but, control but it's, the it's, Congress. It's, it's stuff for the communist media, okay, to play with and play around with. I put a link of an example. Of Stephen Colbert, Donald Trump Jr. Jr. His own deep throat. Okay, so they give them basically meat to work with. Some people actually, actually a lot of people, get their news from these shows, like Stephen Colbert. That's where they get their news from. So whatever his opinion is, is fact to them. So that's all they're doing. Is they're just trying to trick people into believing one thing or the other. But they need to give them something to work with. The material, in other words. Well, the, 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 the very fact that they even went there with this is what's laughable. <laughs> Honestly, that's, that's what's laughable in all this. Because... Uh, Brad Sherman, on the House floor, spoke about impeaching Trump. Wow. Really? Do you think the Republican Party is going to support that? I don't. Well, you know, there is, I don't know, it, it's not, It's not. you know, really good to be having articles of impeachment, you know, placed against you when you're dealing with fucking world leaders. Because world leaders might be stupid, too, and watch Stephen Colbert. And fucking be like, I don't know if I want to deal so good with you because you might be getting impeached and you might be out of here in a few months, bro. So, I mean, they're putting our president in the weakest possible position they possibly can. They're failing at it, but they're trying hard. And that, to me, okay, is fucking, it's not treason, it's something else. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's like Benedict Arnold shit. <laughs> Alienation of uh, alienation of affection, subversion. Right. I mean, I Bingo. know. I, I mean, I know half the country. Okay, wants to go and take our constitution and just fucking throw it away. Just like they took, the, you know, the southern, you know, the southern leader statue right, from the Civil War. Okay, and they want to start over with their socialist government and their socialist communist society. I know it. Half of this country wants that. Well, obviously, a little bit less than half want that. Okay, <clears throat> and 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 the party of that is the Democrats. So they're going to do anything they can, throw anything, all right, and hope that that gear catches that fucking little teeny wrench they threw in there in the machinery. All right, and some somebody somebody fucking decides to take a pot shot at Republican congressmen or senators, you know, or, or God forbid, the, you know, the president himself. Okay? 
And, you know, that's, I, I, I'm sorry. I mean, these guys should be fucking, um, what, how do you get congressmen out of the fucking Senate when they fuck up this bad? That's what, that, that's what, you know, the American people should be doing, okay, it, it, that support, you know, this republic, is saying, these guys got to go. You're, you're the judge, jury, and executioner right here? Is that what you're saying, two senators? Or senators or congressmen, George? They're congressmen. All right, congressmen. Okay, you because, come because articles of impeachment right? have to be introduced in the in the in the, in the Congress. Okay, I'm that's excited. where it's, that's where it starts first. Right. Yeah, these guys got to go. And you know, hopefully, uh, the one in Texas will probably be gone. When you up for election, he'll, he'll be gone. The one in California, probably not. You know, I I, th- I say we just give all of the liberals California, and build a fucking wall there. I'll lay the first brick. Huh. Well, Flycatch uh, in the chat room, uh, let me go to a couple of his comments. He said, this is all about deflection. The DNC is knee-deep in collusion with the Ukrainians. <clears throat> he, goes, he, he goes further <clears throat> by posting uh, a Fortune.com article where, where the odds makers are are betting that Trump will get impeached. <laughs> That's a losing bet. I hate to say it. That's a losing bet. And then the last thing he said in the chat room is, George, this is all about using the Black Caucus as the head of, a, of the spear. And to you, Billy, he says, uh, in regards to the numbers for the, I guess, for the socialist nonsense, less than one-third, Billy, but that number is even too high. So he's probably right. He's probably yeah. right with the one third. <laughs> that is too high. <laughs> Shit. You only had three percent. Was it? What was it three percent that decided to fight the British? That we were on board in the country, or the colonies, I should say. Or was it eight percent? I can't remember what the number is. Uh, who are you asking that of, Bill? Uh, yeah, Bill. Any? Yeah, who Anybody. are you asking that to? Anybody. Uh, I have no idea. There was only like three to eight percent of the people wanted to fight the British. The, the rest wanted to stay British citizens and subjects of the king. Hmm. One third is a lot more than that. Well, guys, I'm going to hit the head. All right. All right, there, there, Tim. Tim, we'll see you later. Yeah, it was a good later. one, brother. Take care. Yep. Ciao for now, buddy. But you know, it 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 doesn't. None of this None of this shocks me. None of this surprises me in any way, shape, or form, because <clears throat> we know that the Democrats have been grasping at straws since the election. Since before the election. So, if they think for one minute that, that this is going to work, boy, are they delusional. So... I mean, if you want to get into some crazy shit, um, Bucks County again. That's what that chemical, that chemical stuff was. But anyway, four teenagers went up and gone missing. They got somebody arrested. He's on like five million dollars cash bail. You need the full five million. You know what I'm saying? Not ten percent of it. So. How does this one guy, what, you know, he's fucking digging graves all night? There's no trace of these, of, of these four uh, teenagers. They're gone. Disappeared. What teenagers? That's what I'd like to know. 
Hold on, I'll tell you in a second. Uh, you lost me. I don't know. I didn't know you were even talking about anybody's teenagers. Hold on. What, did they go down to Mississippi to look into, like, No, this is in human Boston, rights Stanley, stuff, Pennsylvania. When, when, okay. I didn't even know we, you lost me for a minute there, Billy. No, I said if you want to look into something that's really crazy, oh. this is fucking the weirdest thing I, you know, one of the weirdest things I've ever heard of. One guy is able to get four male teenagers basically um, by himself. I don't think so. One guy killed four teenagers? They don't. They can't find them. There's no trace of them. They don't know what the fuck's going on. <clears throat> they, they arrested him. He made but he made bail, and then they arrested him again, and then the judge said five million dollars bail, cash bail, cash bond, full amount. So I don't know what's up with this guy, and how four you know teenage boys. Just up and disappear with no trace. I mean, they're looking everywhere. They got tents up. They're fucking excavating. They're digging. They can't find shit. Mm. They're gone. There's no way he did it by himself. Hmm. I know another state that just pulled out a petition uh, to hang a person. Huh? Yep. Anyone we know? Shit. Uh, <laughs> the politician, somebody in Washington? They, they want the, the town wants him hung. Um, give me just a second here and I'll grabbed it. It's one of the few things I got to see on my own day. <coughs> but it made me sick to my stomach. Uh, there it is right there. Give me this. Copy. Okay, I'm not in the Mixler chat room. I can be. Because um, I got my little tile that's alive now, so I don't have to do any links, just push the button. Would you like me to put it in the Mixler chat room? That would be a big help. Okay. Um, and then I'll, then I'll share it in the uh, Facebook chat for anyone that's not in the chat room. Because there's uh, some folks that aren't in there. Uh, oh, oops. There. All right. Take, grab this. Grab that. And the only reason I brought that up, we're talking about impeachment of these things that are off the end. I, I've never heard of anybody petitioning for a a hanging. Nor have I. Nor have I. I mean, this is a, this is a new one. To, this is this is new new to me. <coughs> but uh, <coughs> here we go again, trying to talk, and I'm and I'm and I'm get, and I'm getting a tickle in my throat. <sighs> um, I've been coughing all day. You're not the only one. I don't know what the hell it is. Well, mine's mine's being caused by a tickle in my throat, which you know kind of sucks. But according to this, uh, what Julie put in the chat room, a man raped his girlfriend's baby to death. Now people oh, want to want him publicly hanged. I'd go for that. I'd sign that. Yeah, well, get this. A petition has been started to publicly hang a man who sexually assaulted a nine-month-old baby until she died. The man, 32-year-old Benjamin Taylor, was found on Monday, October 3rd, in the basement of the house he shared with his girlfriend, Amanda Atkins, who was also the baby's mother. Atkins said when she woke up, she realized that her daughter, 
Emily. Thank you. Emily wasn't in her crib. The baby was eventually found bleeding and unconscious in the basement. Taylor, according to authorities, had raped the baby in such a vicious manner that she was brain dead by the time the paramedics got there. The West Virginia Metro News reported that Emilia's family made the heartbreaking decision to stop life support. Emilia died immediately once the news of the story broke. Taylor's Facebook was flooded with angry posts calling for him to be hanged in public because jail was too good for him. People all over the world are disgusted by what he did to Emilia. The death penalty has been outlawed in West Virginia, but the petition was started and made and makes several good points. The petition started on October 4th, said that incarceration is not justice when it comes to such horrible actions. It also said that people would be afraid to commit such heinous acts if they feared the punishment. It also said that people would be afraid to... Com oh, it's, that's just a repeat of the previous uh, paragraph. And the last, par the last sentence in here says, Rest in peace, Emilia. Your life never even got started. Now, this, this happened back in October? Yes. Okay, and it is now July. Yep. Nine months I... later. And where is the guy? Still in jail? I did not. I didn't get a chance to follow up on it. I I watched the two clips that were news clips, uh, and read the story because there's a lot of pictures with it. It, just, it it broke my it broke my heart. That little girl is just a doll baby. Well, it's nine months later, and obviously nothing has come of this petition by the looks of things. If there's been no update in the story since nine months ago, and over the last uh, nine months, he's probably sitting in jail and he's going to sit there and rot. Well, you might get more of the the more information out of the clips because they were both news uh, Jackson County, West Virginia. Yeah, but understand. But realize this: these clips are from back at that time, nine months ago. Not there. That's not it. It's it's nothing up. There's nothing new. There there would be nothing new in these clips on on a story that's nine months old, unless okay. they print they they put out a new story with updated information. And that's been, I mean, that's been my experience with, with stories such as this. They're either, there's either new information or there isn't. And unfortunately, I, I don't see that there's anything further on this. But what I will do is I will take a search for it and find out what I can, what I can, what I can come up with. Yeah, that's, I'm If anything this. at all. Major and Taylor, okay. Uh, everything everything is dating back to October from w when the story first came out. And it's just and, and some sites that that put it out back in May of this year are just put are just reposting everything that that's already been put out 9 months ago. Uh, so what I just came up with was an August trial date set for man accused of sexually assaulting and killing. And that was done in March, but, uh, 
it happened on October 3rd, and uh, apparently he had his day in court March 2017. Um, That's already and happened. And then May, May uh, let's see, March, let's see. Well, they, yeah, but what I'm saying here, George, is they, it says August trial date set. So he must have appeared before them, uh, and they had a date set. To, well, they say in August, so that's uh, just a couple of weeks away. Um, update, what's this one here? Yeah, the further you go down, those are updates, but this is March 23rd, and that's where they say an August trial is set. There's her little face again. Uh, now, why did they put it off so long? Oh, please. I'll put it in the chat room. Please. I, I, this son of a bitch doesn't even deserve a rope. That's that's too good for him. That would be West Virginia for you, though. They're slow there. Oh, yeah. there's a, It's an August trial date. But that's about as far as it goes. As far as, you know, the updated information. Now it says here, and this is from from back back in March, I guess, if I'm if I'm reading this right. I gotta zoom in on it so I can read it better. A judge has set an August trial date for a West Virginia man accused of sexually assaulting and killing an infant girl. Jackson County Circuit Clerk Bruce DeWeese told the Parkersburg News and Sentinel on Wednesday that the trial of Benjamin Ryan Taylor was set to begin August 8th. Taylor is charged with murder, sexual assault, and child abuse in the death last October of 10-month-old Emilia Elizabeth Barringer. Taylor told deputies he took the baby to the basement of an apartment but blacked out and didn't know how the injuries occurred. Taylor's public defender, Kevin Postlewaite, Postal, yeah, Postlewaite, declined to comment. And that's, that's the most, I guess, the most recent update there is on this. So we're not going to know anything until... Uh, until at least after August. Unbelievable. Yeah. I'm just skimming down here and finding out what, the, what happened to the petition. Oh, uh, this is telling what was going on. All this took place. He needs shot. Anyway, I, that was why I just brought it up, as I'd never, I'd, I'd never seen. I was hoping. Uh. All right. Well. Petition. Moving right along here. Here's something you you might find curious. This is coming out of New York from the Washington Examiner. In New York, a rogue attorney general promotes himself rather than justice. It can't have, it can't have escaped New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman's notice that the voters in his state like to promote racket-busting prosecutors into higher office. It's happened so often, it's almost become cliche from Tom Dewey to Rudy Giuliani and beyond. The problem, though, is th that the canon of legal ethics holds that a prosecutor's first job is not to win in court, but to pursue justice. Just as much 
care must be shown to ensure that the innocent are not brought to trial as is taken to win convictions of the guilty. It's a dichotomy that argues against novel interpretations of the law and groundbreaking, risk-taking prosecutions like the ones that are so familiar to us all, not from real life, but from television. The responsibility for even-handed application of the law fails especially heavy, falls especially heavy on state attorney generals more than most other elected officials because of the enormous resources at their disposal. Unlike even a local big city district attorney, an elected gen attorney general has nearly unlimited power and authority to bring cases of his or her own choosing. Schneiderman, unfortunately, has had these, those powers to pursue a political agenda above and beyond the requirements of his office in furtherance of his own career. Schneiderman is at the center and may even have been the organizer of what some suggest is itself a legally suspect effort by a group of state attorney generals to charge the ExxonMobil Corporation with having, for a period of years, lied to the public about the effects of man-made global warming. This effort, which began with the support of more than a dozen of his colleagues, has dwindled to a dog persecution by just a few, intent on proving some kind of malfeasance was committed on the corporation's part in order to justify the time and expense spent on what is thus far a fruitless inquiry. To understand why this principle is important, consider the case brought by Schneiderman and Massachusetts Attorney General Mara Healy that have dragged on now for more than two years. ExxonMobil has turned over a virtual forest full of internal documents that have produced no indictable information. In fact, the one thing they did do was disprove Schneiderman's in initial argument, forcing him to revise the legal theory of the alleged underlying crime justifying the inquiry. Both Healy and Schneiderman are, gu are gubernatorial Blah. Gubernatorial wannabes. That makes it fair to question whether their pursuits in this matter are more political than legal. Whether they are promoting themselves to the voters, in particular to the radical environmentalist groups that can make or break candidates in Democratic primaries rather than in pursuit of justice. It's a question some of their colleagues in other states are asking. In what can only be termed a striking rebuke, 11 of them filed a proposed amicus brief and accompanying motion for leave supporting ExxonMobil's request for Judge Valerie Caproni of the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York to lift the stay of discovery and opposing Schneiderman and Healy's request for dismissal. The Amici, I think it's Amici, represented by the Texas Attorney General, include the Attorneys General of Louisiana, South Carolina, Alabama, Michigan, Arizona, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Utah, and Arkansas. According to the Amici's papers, Healy takes no position on their motion for leave while Schneiderman opposes the filing for an amicus brief addressing a joint status letter. In filing the brief, the other attorneys general expressed concern that the investigation by the defendants Schneiderman and Healy is heavily politicized, representing a misuse of prosecutorial power 
being used as a tool to silence anyone who disagrees with their views on global climate change. It is highly unusual for one sitting attorney general to criticize another's investigation. For so many to do so underscores the notion Snyderman, Healy, and the others they were able to enlist in their scheme have been acting in bad faith almost from the start. All right, it's almost finished. The issues at, at stake are not small ones. The amici asserts what they refer to as the unrestrained pretextual investigations of ExxonMobil constitute an unconstitutional abuse of investigative power that attempts to use the courts to, in essence, prove which side is correct in ongoing debate over man-made climate change. They further argue the investigations violate ExxonMobil's First Amendment rights by seeking to chill not just its free exercise of political speech and association, but the rights of those who may hold the view dire predictions about the fate of the Earth resulting from the impact of carbon emissions on global temperatures are if not merely in error, the result of a politically driven fantasy. Schneiderman, as the principal author of the legal conspiracy to get ExxonMobil, deserves special attention for his misdeeds. He has abused his authority to the point it has drawn the attention of his colleagues from other states. If he is allowed to leave to continue his investigations, and to escape responsibility for his abuse, he will have set a pattern for his successor in New York and other states to follow. This must not be allowed to happen, for it would imperil our rights if we were allowed to do so. It's time the legislature began to consider whether it is appropriate to remove him from office rather than waiting for the voters to do it in the next election. So all of this, in, in, in my true. opinion, is a political move on the part of Schneiderman and his friend Healy. And what they expect? They're Democrats. They're liberals. They're idiots. Well, technically they're right. They're right? Yeah. How so? I guarantee you there will be another ice age on this planet. I guarantee you there will be major droughts on this planet. If we're here or not, does it matter? It does not fucking matter. Okay? If they want to spin it for their little own agenda, whatever. But technically, they are right. The plant's going to freeze again someday. Uh, the, you know, the, there's going to be droughts everywhere. There's going to be heavy storms and shit. And it's just the way planet Earth works. I mean, it's just, you know, it's happened over and over and over and over again. The poles have shifted how many fucking times, man? You know, a lot. So, I guess that's our fault, too. It's just what the planet does. And you're right, George, what they're doing is they're taking something that's a natural occurrence and throwing fear into stupid people, okay, who just don't realize and, and, and are uneducated, I guess. I don't know. Or they're just drinking the Kool-Aid. And they just believe in, like, what Al Gore was saying. Okay? Well, Al Gore maybe was like, oh, look, 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 around this time it's supposed to warm up. It happened back in history this many this many thousands of years ago and this many thousand years ago. That's a pattern. He made a lot of money doing it too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you always have to be suspect of the motive, for sure. And all the motives I see are all self-serving. You know, most motives are, <clears throat> but when you are 
a leader, okay, you it's you're not it's not you're not supposed to be that way. You're supposed to be fucking virtuous and shit. So, unfortunately, we don't have leaders like that right now in time. We ha we have had leaders like that, but right now in this time, you know, the one leader and his administration is under attack by these people. And the, again, they're throwing whatever they can up against the wall to scare people. And you know, you know, it's Trump's fault that the fucking planet's getting warmer, colder, whatever. You know, I mean, I'm California surprised. Billy, you know, now, you know what I'm surprised with? I'm surprised that the left hasn't hasn't come out and actually accused him of being behind the crucifixion of <clears throat> of Christ. I mean, look at California; they were dry as a bone. You couldn't water your lawn. People were fucking spray painting their lawn green and shit. Now they're all flush with water there now, aren't they? Yep. But you don't really hear about it. You don't hear about how the drought's over. Just when it was going on, it was big news. Like when that dam uh, failed because there was so much fucking water, they, they covered that. A very, very little bit. More on the internet than any place else. But when it's not, you know, doom and gloom, they don't cover it. It's, it's, it's really simple. It's ratings. It's a fucking show. You're watching a show. I don't know. I'm just in an aggravated mood. It's like I did an algorithm. It took me a long fucking time. I was pissed off, and I don't like it at all. So I'm aggravated with it. So I'm just in an aggravated mood because of it. It's too much fucking math. It took fucking three hours. It's ridiculous. So I'm pissy. So you got to forgive me. Oh, here's something curious. Flycatch says that Trump had a prayer breakfast today and all the Christian pastors laid their hands upon him. Okay. Jesus Christ. Did the lame walk? Somebody get up out of a wheelchair? That'd be news. They laid hands on him and, you know, somebody got the fuck up out of a wheelchair and started walking around and did the jig. We'll have a bunch of pastors, reverends, whatever they are, put their hands on him and, and, and praying is saying a lot right there. They would do that for any president. I mean, you want the, they want the president to succeed. Yeah, well, I don't think Obama, Obama had any prayer meeting. They, Obama was a Muslim. Read his book. Dreams of I know life. he was a Muslim, but what I'm saying is I haven't heard any other president having something like that go on. Obama basically says he's a Muslim in his own fucking voice if you get the audio book. So I know there's an audio book out there because I've seen the documentary and they played snippets of his audio book where, at the, you know, he's at his father's grave and he's crying. And he decides to take on the mission of his father. Now, now his purpose is set. And these are in his own words. And then you just need to, and then you just need to know about his father. You know what his ideology was. And his ideology was, America sucks. I hate them. They're coming in here, trying to you know, do this and do that. You know, so they so they resisted it, and now they have a statue of him made of fucking, I don't know, banana peels, or is it, with fucking spray paint on it? I don't know what, the thing looked hideous. Look, it was made out of popcorn. You know the statue I'm talking about? You don't, you don't know about that. When he went to Kenya to visit. 
the president when he was president. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I knew he went there to visit. Right. Yeah, there yeah, there there's a statue of him there. That that, that they built. Put <laughs> statue well, of Why not? Of, he was he was their he he was their native son, so they right. Google they had to it. honor it's, their it's, their native son somehow. Well, this is an honor in anybody. If you Google Obama's monument or statue in Kenya and take a look at this fucking thing, you're like, what the fuck is that made out of? It's twigs, twigs, mud, and fucking some piss. It's for, you know. Now, see, if they would have let and didn't resist, um, they'd be a lot better off now, wouldn't they? They wouldn't be so much a you know, third world country at all. They'd have running water. They'd have electricity. They'd have nice housing. They would have fucking manufacturing. They would be doing fucking tech support for Dell. All right? I, you know, whatever. But it, now, now that's our fault too, because you know they didn't want us to stay, so we left. And I guess now they think you know we left the mess. But you know the mess was already there when we when we got there. Get a bunch of American businessmen trying to start shit up there, get business going there. Billy, I'm gonna pop a link in the chat room to an image. Tell me if that's what you're, the statue you're talking about. Does it look yellow? No. Oh, man. Oh, you've got to be kidding me today. Yeah, that might be it. That might be it. I mean, what what is that? That looks like, you know, a snowman. I mean, is that just straight up concrete? Okay. Hell. Because there's no bronze on that. There's no granite in that. <laughs> you know, that, look, that looks like concrete to me. Maybe it's got some rebarb in it. I don't know. Hold it all together. He looks like a cartoon character. Your guess is as good as mine on that one, Bill. I think it's concrete, dude. I really do. I think it's concrete. It is, is what it's made of. Cement. It's made of cement. It's all discolored. See where it's discolored at everywhere? The thing's already starting to deteriorate. What the fuck? Yeah, I was looking. I, I, I already looked at it, Bill. And honestly, I don't know what to make of it. Uh, it's yeah, howdy doody, right? Please don't dis don't don't disparage a a, 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 a a nice character like howdy doody by. By comparing that to, to Obama, please don't do that. <clears throat> Unbelievable day. Mike, where did you disappear to? I'm here. By the time I found, I had to go searching to find the mute button. Man, I was drifting off again. I took one of those oh, happy snore pills. Rambling. Don't mind me. I'm just rambling. It's like, you know, Alice in Wonderland. Remember the pieces of cake? Eat me. Eat, eat me. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 
So I picked one of the eat me ones, and you know, I'm sitting back here, and uh, uh, and I was, uh, yeah, it's starting to kick in. But tonight, uh, tonight I was on it for probably I don't know six, six five, six seven, eight, three four hours straight without the game, and I I was busting tables and serving and. Um, one of the Masonic lodges had a every Wednesday. They have uh, they open the lodge up and they have a lobster roll dinner complete, and it's cheap. And uh, the people in town, a lot of people come to it. And uh, but I guess two of the guys that were shorthanded. So one of my friends, who's one of the lodge officers down here in Cape Cod. Said, Mike, you do anything tomorrow night? You want to give us a hand? I said, Yeah. I said, Mike, I don't know how much I can lift and stuff for this cane. They said, No, whatever you can do. So I was fine. and But I still, I got another lesson of, you know, how to deal with the public. There was, this building was put up in, I don't know, somewhere around the Civil War. And it's original. And there's still, the city is giving the money, the town, and helping them restore it because it needed work. I mean, the fucking thing around, picture it from 1870 up till to now, up till now. It needed work. But anyway, the main hall, these Masonic lodges on Cape Cod, the majority of the people back then that were on the Cape were seafaring men, they were whalers. You know what I mean? 1800s? Moby Dick shit. You know what I mean? And I was talking with one of them, and the main hall downstairs has two round columns, supports, because it's one big room. That's the main dining room downstairs, the first floor. And the, But there are these two big columns that go up, and there's the supports for upstairs. And I looked at them, and I, I looked, something looked weird, and I said... Those aren't regular, they're, they're wood. I said, yeah. I said, those are ship masts. He said, yes, they are. I said, you got to be kidding me. No. I said, look at this shit. From the old days with the whalers and everything. and I, It was it was cool. But the, but the public, some of the people were there were fucking jury. The ceilings are 15 feet high. You know what I mean? It's, it's old school shit. And uh, so they've got fans, but if you put the fans on full, you know how fans can start shaking from left and right, left and right? And so there was this table, and one of those fans was shaking, and it looked like the globe for the light on it. The globe is going to come off and nail somebody in the head. So I pointed out, one of the guys shut the fan down, and the guy sitting underneath it called me over, and he's sweating. And he said, why did they shut the fan off? I said, because it's not safe. You're right underneath it, and the globe could fall. And it just people are obnoxious. The guy said, well, I thank you very much for explaining to me about my safety, but that does nothing for my comfort. I said, then how about we move you over near, over near the door and the way the, near the band was playing? He said, I don't want to be near that door. I want to be near this door. My car is parked outside there. I said, life is so hard sometimes, isn't it? I was just, I turned into a sarcastic jerk and he looked at me. And I said, we just don't get what we want all the time, do we? Fucking tourist. But, uh, but anyway, so three, four hours standing and clearing tables and everything. And I can feel it, but you know what I'm doing? I'm pushing it. I'm pushing it because I figure if I keep pushing it and to the point that it hurts, then maybe this is good for it. That I'll I'm, I got to bring this to a close, man. I'm getting sick of dealing with the pain. So if I just keep pushing it and pushing it, maybe I'm starting to use muscles I haven't used in a long time, and and then it'll be good for it. I'm hoping. Uh, it, it hurts. It aches. But ever since I started, I did that motorboating thing where I'm kicking my feet under, you know, in the water, where you kick the feet back and forth. Um, I think that helped a lot. And now it's, I'm starting to feel the legs less numb. It comes in and out of being numb. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because before it's like a, a numb with a bad ache, really uncomfortable. But now that that seems to be stopping in. Uh, it's uh, I'll just 
keep up with that. I called the doctor. I had him fill the prescription again to give me some more of those oxy shits. Oxy shits. <laughs> but but you know what you know what we're doing with them. You told me to do it. We did it. We're cutting them in half. Even though they're five milligram oxys, at least I took a razor blade and cut them in half. So I've been taking half of one now instead of one five milligram. So it's even less, but it still helps me at least fall asleep. So yeah, and it's letting you push it. Well, I'm not taking it during the day at all. I only take it at night. You know? Well, I know. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to take it during the day. I don't want to take anything during the day. I'll put up with the pain. Screw it. Yeah, it makes you sleepy. Yeah. But I don't know. So I don't know. But George, I honestly don't know. Is it a good thing? Over exerting it now at this point and standing without my cane. I did that three, four hours working, helping them out, and I, I put the cane aside. I said, you know what? I'm going to do this without the cane. And I did. And then at the end of that three, four hours, I was like, where's the fucking cane, dude? I want the cane. <laughs> I just wanted to sit down. I said, all right, that's enough. I mean, you did take breaks, right? Where you sat down. No, I went outside without the cane and I, I had a cigarette and leaned on a car. And then I go back in. All right, after I finish the cigarette. Oh. You need one of them hurricanes. Well, I need a shitload of fucking helium balloons that I can put under my arms and, and just like float around the room. Yeah. That would make me happy. But, and uh, you know, I'm just thrilled that they didn't ask me to put on the fucking Lobster Man costume. I, w I wasn't. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm setting up place placemats and stuff for people to come in. All of a sudden, this guy comes in behind me wearing a lo lobster man costume, and the people that were the band in the room, they start going, "Do you know the lobster man? The lobster man?" I was like, "Get the fuck out of here! Are you serious?" But it was corny. But people loved it. They were singing along with it. You go oh, shit. I can think of the guys that dress up in the hot dog outfits and they stand out on the street waving and they wear like funky clothes. You ever see those guys? A clown outfit and holding signs up trying to get business to come into the store. Oh yeah, we got one right down the street, but she's dressed up. It's dressed up as a, a Statue of Liberty. I don't know, man. I think I, I might turn to a life of crime before I put on a hot dog costume and stand on the side of the street. I don't know. George, would you be willing to do that? Uh, oh, you're muted. What? George, you're muted. What, what? Put on a lobster costume or something? Some well, shit? Hell yeah, no, I, I wouldn't I, do that shit. No, I wouldn't do that either. I'm not, or a hot dog costume and stand out on the road and wave at the cars. Get the fuck out of here. Or, I, no, I turn into a criminal. That's it. Stop mm -hmm. robbing banks, dude. I'm not going to do it. Dress me up like Bozo the Clown or Ronald McDonald and have me wave at cars? No. Not going to happen. That's it. Bonnie and Clyde, here I come. Where's the Thompson? Fuck it. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> oh, shit. Some of those outfits are... You ever see the one that's a slice of pizza? Uh-uh. Oh, oh, brother. Yes. Uh well... Get a load of this. I'm, I'm looking at, at the fake news network and MSNBC, the official state-run media of the former Obama dictatorship and failed right Hillary back. Clinton campaign. Cool. Yeah. And here's some of their, their, their top stories on MSNBC. GOP in crisis over Trump Jr. Russia email revelation. Right. Yeah, then there's the, was then, about. then there's the last word with Lawrence O'Donnell, Kushner letting Trump Jr. take the fall. Oh brother! Then Rachel Madcow, Wall Street Journal Intel cites Trump Russia timeline starting in spring 2015. Oh God, are they desperate? Yeah. I I. 
the Billy was talking a minute ago, and I just want to say I just ran across it. They found those bodies 17 minutes ago. Where were they at? I put the link in the room. All right, I just got off. I'm ready to go back. I can find my keys. What the fuck? <laughs> also, George and everybody, tonight that event that I did and at that lodge, I put pictures in the. Uh, in uh, that chat thing, you know, on Facebook. I think mm -hmm. it's on Facebook, isn't it? And you can see a picture of the guy wearing the lobster outfit. And I sent that over to Lisa. I figured she'd get a kick out of it. She wrote, please tell me you're not wearing that. I said, and I wrote back, I went, no, I'm not wearing that. But I mean, they were busy, man. Brother. You see it? Yeah, I'm looking at it. I don't believe a, it, but I'm looking at it. But, I mean, it's it's a good deal. I mean, the meal, lobster rolls, soup, corn on the cob, everything, I think it's like 15 or 16 bucks or something with soda, or you can drink soda. And for down here on the Cape, that's cheap. By the way, gentlemen, I mean, we are, and, and, lady, and, 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 and lady, we are joined <laughs> by the host of Crazy Nation Radio on Blog Talk Radio, Ron Rec. Hello, Ron Rick. Hello, Michael. Hi. How's my leg feeling? It's it's getting better. It's getting it's getting better. Well, I'm all drugged up and fucked up, and I feel absolutely fabulous. <laughs> What'd you do? Well, no, I'm not drugged up. I wish I was though. No. Oh, shit. No, we had a bad accident today at the, sh at the house. So. What happened? What do you mean, uh, accident? One of my workers got fucked up really good. <clears throat> Guy oh, working for me. Fucked up. What What happened? Equipment? Farm equipment? Yeah, well, the truck. One of my trucks. Uh, he was changing a drive shaft, pulling a drive shaft out. <clears throat> and I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. But it was in my driver, which goes downhill. And it he, rolled it over had, him. He, he, it rolled over him, right? I knew that you were going to say that. It, it yeah. didn't uh, lock the tires. Didn't, didn't block the tires. Yeah, didn't oh, hit the e brake. Nope. You know how common how that how common that is. I just can't believe this guy would do that though. Listen oh, to me. This is one yeah. of my best people, man. You know what I mean? It just blew my fuck. Well, anyway, he went through my house with the truck. Oh, you're kidding me. Uh no. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Yeah. That thing rolled right through the wall. Yep, went through a wall. <laughs> yep. Right in my back door of my house. <clears throat> So is he setting up an ICU? Well, no, he's in. He was in trauma all day, but he's in a regular room. He broke four ribs in his shoulder bone, collarbone. <clears throat> Ouch! Once that drive, once that drive That's shaft, you disconnect that universal joint. There's nothing to hold that rear end. Yeah, there's hold nothing else holding on to that motherfucker. No, nothing. that's nope. just gonna go. Uh, but I just couldn't believe. Why would? Uh, first off, why didn't you take it to the shop on the concrete and do it there? Like I said when I instructed you this morning. And I'm not mad at him. I'm not. I mean, you know, fucking too much on your mind, man. You know what I'm saying? He's trying oh, to get shit done in a big hurry. Well, you, know you know what? You know what? He paid for his price. He paid, oh, he he paid, paid the price early, for it. You know? He paid the early. Like I, like I tell yeah. people that used to start working for me at the restaurant. I, and hold up, hold up your hands. Show me your fingers. When you fuck up in a restaurant, you're going to lose one of these fingers or part of it. And okay. that'll remind you for the rest of your life that you were stupid. Yeah. yeah. It was your mistake. Right. Right, but anyway, I, I got a hold of his wife, and she had to come in from Arkansas, and oh, you know, dude. long drive, and a little baby boy and stuff. And I, we jumped in my dad's Lincoln Continental, in a luxury cruiser, you know, the nice car. Oh. And uh, I took him. We went to Springfield to the hospital. They airbagged him out of here, you know, helicopter and everything. So. Oh shit! It ain't like I'm not used to shit like this. You know what I mean? This, but this yeah. is my buddy. It's a different this fucking story. I just, you know, I'm a frantic. I'm on the phone nine one one, cussing them the fuck out, man. You know, ambulance blew past the fucking house. You know, and I said, "Are they fucking stupid? They can't see that black fucking Volkswagen at the end of the driveway." Jesus, man. <laughs> is, is he gonna be okay? Yeah, he's gonna be all right. He's gonna be fucking no, hurting no like a motherfucker for a while. Internal bleeding, no head trauma. No, no, uh, -uh. no, uh, -uh. no. Just got four broke ribs and a broken collarbone. Was it Dooley's in the back of that truck? Oh yeah, it's one time. Did both did both tires go over him at the same did time? The tires completely missed him. The pumpkin got him. Oh, yeah, the pumpkin got hold of him. 
Shit. Just yeah, like he's laying on the side when crush. it started rolling. He was laying on the side when it started rolling, you know. He moved his feet. Yeah, he got his feet inside, you know. Shit. But it, it took about a 20-foot roll, you know. And, of course, the truck has a you know a grill guard on the front, you know, the brush bumper guard shit on it, you know. And that saved the front of my truck, thank God. But still, you know, fuck the truck. I can replace it. No big fucking deal. You know, not my friend. Yeah, Jesus, man. Yeah. So it's been a fucked up day. You know, so I'm tired. I did take some drugs. I, I admit, I will let you know, I have taken a Xanax. Yeah, but this is gonna co- this is gonna cost some money too. Medevacing with a helicopter. I don't know what that yeah. costs. Billy can probably tell far. you. So what's insurance as far? The, the about cover? twenty grand. About twenty grand, oh, probably. Jesus Christ. That's yeah. what insurance is for, Mike. You know. Well, I know. I know. But he's okay. Know. The main thing, he's alive. Now the question is, will my insurance company cover him? That's a question because if he had any dope in his system, ain't gonna cover shit. He's fucked. Oh. He couldn't even sue. Yeah. You know? Right. So, and he told me he's because I'm not su- gonna sue you, Ron. I said I never asked you that question. Don't even worry about that, man. It's never gonna happen. He goes, it was my fault. I fucked up. <laughs> and he did, you know. Yeah, he did. But man, you know, unbelievable. I said he had just too much on his mind. You know what I'm saying? And you know, he wasn't paying attention. But I told him, I said, this is gonna something you're gonna fit. His dad was there and his mom and everybody. And they said, yeah, well, you know, it ain't Ron's fault. You fucking did it. You know, can't blame him. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not even a mechanic, and you, I know the first thing you do, you gotta, you gotta block those wheels in, dude. Mm-hmm. Well, you, gotta you know that anything you can do, emergency brake, anything you can do to make sure that once you drive pull that drive shaft, right. otherwise yeah, you gotta that, make sure that motherfucker ain't going nowhere. That's right. It's right. gonna move. It's gonna go on you. And see, generally when I do them, I usually I chuck the wheels. You know what I mean. Hit the e-brake, and the other thing, and, and, you know, and I put the vehicle in neutral. You know what I mean? The reason why I put it in neutral, one, I will want to be able to move that drive shaft around. You know what I mean to get it out. Right. right. But there again, I want to know make sure that fucking that cocksucker stable. You know what I mean? It ain't going nowhere. You know. That's why you always stick them in neutral, make sure they're not going to roll anywhere. You know, then put them back in park. But it ain't going to matter. Put them park or not, you pull the drive shaft, it's fucking in neutral anyway. Which you one know? did he pull? Was was it the one that he must have pulled it from the back part from the yeah from the back. right the back. The back, the right. back, right Shh. off the off the off the axle. Yeah, because if you took it off the transmission, that thing would have jumped in midair. Yeah, right. It, it could have caught the drive shaft and put that thing right, the right around like catapult. Yep, yep. I've had it happen to me before. Oh yeah, that's fun too. While I was driving. Oh joy. Yeah, I flipped that fucker on its roof. Ooh, look at us! We're in midair. God is bringing us closer to Him. Look. What? It'd, it'd be like, oh, the heavens are opening up. Why is the truck going any higher? <laughs> yeah. God must be reaching and bringing but, us up. Anyway, this this kid, he's a good guy. I mean, he's you know, man, fucking, you know, he owns a he owns a greenhouse and shit. He does plants and everything. I mean, these guys can grow some shit. <clears throat> he's done it all of his life, you know. But uh, you know. He's like, fuck, man, you know, I can't lose, you know, I'm losing my fucking paycheck. I ain't going to get paid for over a month now. I'm fucked. Just, man, don't worry about that. You'll get paid. Mm. I'll take you, man. Don't think you ain't going to live without nothing. That ain't going to happen. You know? And you George, work, you work for me. and George, I wrote to, I wrote to one of the NCOs, a gunner, gunnery sergeant. Um, that was with that unit. We, we were close to him. Apparently, he's not with that unit anymore over at Stewart. But I, I, I mean, I was worried. I was worried if he was one of the guys that was in that tanker that went down because they said that I think it was it was either six or nine of the people of the Marines that were killed were members of that unit in Stewart. Yeah, because didn't that didn't that uh, tanker actually originate from Stewart? Yes. So <clears throat> I wrote to him and I. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you. Oh, no, I, I called him up. I called the number, and I, I left a message, and I said, you know, I said, Matt, I said, I hope to God that this message gets to you, because Lisa and I are really worried. And uh, I said, even if you can't call me, at least text me to, so that we know that you're all right. And uh, And he wrote back. He said, Mike, this is Matt. I won't say the last name, but this still shows the attitude 
the, with the military attitude. I'm good to go. Right now, I'm working. I'm working my civilian job, and I'm on a protection detail. I'm not sure exactly who was on that plane, just that they were Marines. This is a very, very sad and strange incident. As 130s don't fall out of the sky, something drastic happened. We don't know. Uh, we won't know for some time exactly what. Don't believe, now he says, don't believe the media. They fuck, they fuck up details just to be first to the camera. Heartless bunch that they are. We'll know the truth, but it could take a few weeks. Thanks for the kind words and supports from you and Lisa. Please continue to pray for the families of those Marines. Semper Fi, brother, be dangerous, stay frosty. Wow. So, so even, even from, you know, the attitude even with the military is don't trust the media. They're, they're shooting themselves in the foot on every front there is. No matter what angle it is, nobody's trusting the media. And look at it, even with this. That's I, so look at this shit. Well, <clears throat> Gunslinger put, put something up on my uh, timeline on Facebook regarding a uh, an army first class, an army first sergeant. Who apparently. <laughs> Uh, has, has a whole lot of problems uh, thanks to an, uh, an illegal bust. Illegal bust? A arrest. Oh. Now get this. Veteran nearly killed by cops for legal open carry gets gun back. Now get a load of this. After more than four years and $175,000, an Iraq war veteran finally has his firearms back following a confrontation with police that went viral back in 2013. Temple police seized a Blackjack Firearms AR-15 and a Kimber Ultra Carry Pro II 45 caliber handgun from Army First Sergeant C.J. Grisham. After they apprehended him, on the side of the road, while he and his 15-year-old son were, hi were hiking for an Eagle Scout project in March 2013. The entire incident caught on film and instantly went viral, causing outrage over the violation of Grisham's civil rights. In the video, a complaint but objecting Grisham can be seen arguing the legality of the stop, the manhandling treatment he receives, and his subsequent arrest. Grisham knew his rights under Texas law after having successfully completed concealed carry weapons training and securing his concealed handgun license. He also knew the stop was illegal. Let me put the cigarette and I'll continue this. Officer, <clears throat> excuse me, Officer Steve Ermis was the first officer to make contact with Grisham and his son. Instead of inquiring as to whether Grisham had a CHL for the weapons he, he was carrying, Ermis approached Grisham, reached out and grabbed the AR-15, and as soon as Grisham's hand came near it, Ermis pulled out his own gun and pointed it at Grisham. Even though he was legally open carrying his long gun and legally concealed carrying his handgun, Grisham was manhandled by police, and when he questioned the officer's legal reason for detaining and disarming him, <clears throat> he was arrested. Ermis first charged Grisham with the misdemeanor of resisting arrest, but later changed the charge to interfering with the duties of a peace officer. Ermis then claimed that confronted Grisham for walking on the wrong side of the road. Not only was Grisham charged with criminal activity, but he was forced to defend himself in court against the charges. Even though the first trial ended with a hung jury, 
he was eventually convicted in the second trial of interfering with the duties of a law enforcement officer, a misdemeanor, but it wasn't without a hefty price. Grisham's court costs, legal fees, and miscellaneous costs were paid for by selfdefensefund.com and totaled $175,000. Larry, Larry Kilberg, Fund's national director, told the Temple Daily Telegram Grisham's case was the, was the result of an out-of-control legal system starting with a bully cop, manipulation of the charges to fit the defense case, followed by a very biased judge, Neil Richardson. The video suggested otherwise. The officers on the scene told Grisham he was grossly displaying his firearm and that people were in fear. Ironically, the only dangerous actions taking place with Grisham's firearms happened when Ermis disarmed Grisham. The officer slung the rifle, wi slung the rifle wildly, even pointing it in several directions without first clearing the rifle and ensuring it wasn't that ensuring it was unloaded. Grisham questioned the Temple Police officers' knowledge of the law, and they proudly replied that they were exempt from the law and that the citizens don't care what the law is. But it's what happened to Grisham's gun after his arrest that is making news today. His Blackjack Firearms AR-15 and Kimber Ultra Carry Pro 2 45 caliber handgun were not promptly returned to him even after the trial ended. It took over four years for Temple Police to return his weapons, even after he demanded them back in December 2013. At first, the police department claimed they didn't have them. Then they said, in a, court they said a court reporter had possession of them in a secured room, but still didn't return them to him. Following the ordeal, Grisham became the face of Open Carry Texas in 2014. The gun rights organization pushed for the ability to open carry handguns in Texas, which became legal in January 2016. On June 30th, Temple Police finally released Grisham's weapons to him. The Temple Daily Telegram reported that Grisham's first actions were to clean and test fire both weapons to make sure that they still worked. I'm relieved that after 1,567 days, I finally have the guns back that were stolen from me by Temple Police Department on a backcountry road where I was minding my own business, Grisham said. Once again, local police have proven they apparently have more power than the U.S. Constitution. They cannot only detain and disarm someone, but they can make up charges, force a man and his family to go through lengthy and stressful court proceedings, and prevent him from protecting his family with legally obtained and possessed weapons. Oh yeah, and now he, is also, a, he also has a criminal record. Grisham sued in court, but the case was dismissed. He could still appeal to the Texas Supreme Court, but he has not stated whether or not he will. Now there's an update here. The original title incorrectly stated that Grisham received 175 k This was incorrect. It has been updated. The Free Thought Project apologizes for the mistake. Hmm. So how much did he finally, did he, did he get money? They paid him off? Well, the hundred seventy-five thousand was was to pay his court fee, his court costs, legal fees, and all that shit. Okay, did he sue them for? Did he go after the cop? He's, I he, wonder. He hasn't. He, he he. As it says in the last paragraph, uh, Grisham sued in and, court, but the case was dismissed. But he could still appeal is, to the Texas Supreme Court, but he has not stated whether he whether or not he will. I wonder if it's a misdemeanor, if that will affect his right to own 
Well, it can't because they returned his guns, so it doesn't affect his right to own firearms. No, but he still has but, a criminal record, unfortunately. But that's uh, that's that's the same exact handgun that I carry, the Ultra Carry, the Ultra Carry Two with the Kimber. Mm -hmm. That's the same forty-five. That's not a cheap fucking handgun. So no. this guy had some money there. And for them to hold it for four years, they were being dickheads. That's a thousand dollar forty-five. You know, so they were just being assholes. He's lucky that they didn't do what the cops used to do, George. Oh, 20 years ago, 15 years, yeah, 20 years ago. When they'd confiscate weapons, I mean, especially collections, they'd show up with 55 gallon drums, metal drums, and they'd put all the rifles in the drums and all the pistols, and then they'd pour a gallon of water in it, and then they'd seal the drum. They'd load it on a truck and they'd store it like that. So now after a year, two years, when the court would order to return the guns, they'd give them back to you. Yeah, you get them back. Rusted to shit. All fucked up. ATF was even doing that shit. So at least the cops aren't doing that stuff. I thought they were going to say that he got it back, but they took apart, they opened up the slide, they took out the springs, they took out the firing pin and everything. At least the, at least the guns functioned. They didn't mess with them. But, um, you know, who knows what the finish was like. If they beat the shit out of them. I'm, you know, it's, it's an attitude in the country that has to be changed because police, the police do not consider, and the district attorneys, they do not consider firearms personal property. It's like, you don't really own it. And we have the right to take it from you anytime we want. You know, well, that sounds, that, that's all, that's I, almost like the, with that Oregon case where Oregon is, is uh, going to, the, the governor there is going to sign in, sign a law, sign into law gun confiscation. Right. And they don't need a reason to do it either based, well, on, yeah, they, based on that. You could, you could call and turn somebody in and they'll just take it. Are you talking about that case here in Texas? Yeah. Yeah. In Temple. That, Temple. Yeah. That's east of here. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, tell me about uh, it. You know, uh, you know, if guns, if gun, gun owners were uh, coordinated with their attempts, then it would have been nice to see like 20, 30, 40,000 uh, gun owners show up and protest in front of that police department, and that would underscore to them: Do you want, do you want exposure like this? Now, how do you look? Because police don't like that type of exposure whatsoever. Oh, what happens now after this law change? Can you imagine if? 5,000 or 10,000 gun owners all of a sudden started exercising their open carry rights and walking around the streets of Temple going, go ahead, try it on me now. That's what needs to happen. No, you know what I mean? That, that's It's revenge against them for what they did. Yeah. A lot of them need the revenge like that because back in 2005, Dallas County Constable was stole one of my 357s. Having a hard time hearing you, gun. With you got a you got wind uh, coming in with you. It's that fan. No, I got a super fan now. Wow. It's a 240 volt super fan. Blower units out of a central AC unit. <laughs> hey, look at those links I put in the chat room. There's yeah. I wanted to get you. to that, uh, Ron. I wanted to get to that. Uh, Apparently, Ron put three links in the chat room. The first one is from Vox.com. And it says, Today's net neutrality protest is a last stand in a fight that could change the Internet. Net neutrality is about to disappear. Today's battle for the net is an Internet-wide attempt to save it. Now, get a load of this. After weeks of buildup, and facing higher stakes than ever before. Websites around the internet are protesting today on behalf of net neutrality. The battle for the net, also known as the day of action. The protest has mounted among some of the web's biggest corporations and communities in the face of the FCC's current attempts to dismantle net neutrality regulations. At issue... At issue is the basic question of whether internet service providers 
should be treated like public utilities and therefore forced to distribute service to everyone equally or allowed to behave like free market competitors, potentially hijacking your internet speeds and access. But while such protests have made an impact in the past, doubts are, raising, doubts are rising that this year's protest will have any effect on a conservative <coughs> FCC chair who seems determined to undo what he sees as a largely partisan ruling enacted during the Obama administration. Since 2015, there have been laws in place that restrict ISPs like Verizon and Comcast from deliberately slowing internet speeds, blocking access to certain services and sites, and requiring customers to pay more for fully unrestricted speeds and access. But now, with the FCC actively working to repeal those laws, net neutrality advocates fear they could lose all those protections. The FCC proposed plan to repeal current net neutrality legislation titled Restoring Internet Freedom was announced in May and is open for public comment until July 17th. The current setbacks facing net neutrality are dramatic and would essentially allow ISPs to have unregulated control over how you access the Internet, as well as unregulated access to your personal data and web usage information. Because of the potential changes, because the potential changes are so drastic, they are sparked, they have sparked a dramatic reaction from many of the web's major players, including Amazon, Reddit, and Netflix, along with numerous other influential websites from Pornhub to Kickstarter. I gotta increase the size of the font here. So give me a second while I do that. Because I'm, I'm having a hard time reading it. It's so small print. Uh, let's see here. Today's day of action is intended to be a collective wake-up call. A protest that alerts the public to the serious changes facing the Internet at large. What to expect from the day of action protest? Advocates for net neutrality have been urging Internet users to speak out on the matter for weeks. Thanks to efforts like John Oliver's May viral video asking his viewers to comment on the FCC's which temporarily crashed the FCC website, more than 5 million comments on the plans have already been received. In that same vein, some senators urged the FCC to prepare for today's protest by shoring up its servers in anticipation of a surge in traffic from angry customers. But the official action will come today, when many websites go dark, put up banners, send out pop-up alerts or calls to action, or purposefully interfere with the speed of their own pages in order to draw visitors' attention to the issue. Now, oh, there is more here, sorry. The last virtual day of protest like this one took place in September 2014 in anticipation of the 2015 ruling when websites across the internet delivered a day of internet slowdown. During that protest, many websites greeted visitors with symbolic loading symbols and deliberately delayed their load times in order to materially remind users that's, that what's at stake in the conversation surrounding net neutrality is your internet speed and access to information. <clears throat> Netflix put the following out. Netflix will never outgrow the fight for hashtag net neutrality. Everyone deserves an open internet. Urgent. If you're not freaking out about net neutrality right now, you're not paying attention. The FCC wants to destroy net neutrality and give giant 
cable companies, and it goes into a, into a uh, a story on on that on that uh, tweet. Look for websites displaying banner ads linking to net neutrality activist sites like Battle for the Net, pop-up notifications, and in-app alerts from mobile apps. Websites redirecting you to comment pages and write-in letters, blogs going dark in protest, and social media discussing hashtag net neutrality and hashtag battle for the internet. Some websites have made site-specific enhancements. For example, WordPress has an inst- an instable an an yeah, installable plugin for the day of protest so people who who host their websites on WordPress can easily tell visitors what's up while Vimeo created a special bumper video on the topic to encourage VM, VMO creators to add it to their videos. Google, Facebook, and Amazon initially commented to joining the protest as well. But in actuality, their contributions have been barely visible. While Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg posted a note of support on his personal blog, the site itself has not changed. And Google and Twitter posted pro-net neutrality blog entries, but neither has visibility altered or interrupted their website services, though Twitter is promoting the hashtag net neutrality hashtag. Tumblr encouraged its users to support net neutrality and hosted a panel discussion on the issue on its Action Time blog. While this isn't the first fight the Internet's most visible communities have waged on behalf of net neutrality, it is the first such prominent fight to be waged during the Trump administration. Various recent polls on the subject indicate bipartisan support for the concept of net neutrality, but also, paradoxically, a dislike of government regulation of telecommunication industries, which indicates confusion about what's at stake regarding the FCC's proposed changes. You may recall the hard-won 2015 FCC ruling that enacted net neutrality legislation by forcing ISPs to comply with federal telecommunications regulations. The ruling followed years of intense campaigning from internet activists as well as notable 2014 as well as a notable 2014 day of protest from prominent internet voices and was hailed as a victory for a free and open internet. That's why you'd be forgiven for believing the battle for net neutrality has already been fought and won. Essentially it was. But under the Trump administration, it's being fought again. The FCC's new chair, Ajit Pai, Ajit Pai, Ajit Pai, I think that's how it's pronounced, who was appointed by President Trump in January, takes a staunchly anti-regulatory approach to the laws that govern how ISPs conduct business. He has said repeatedly that the 2015 ruling passed on a party-line vote and believes the FCC's previous 2015 ruling is essentially frivolous and unnecessary. So he's seeking to undo it by deregulating ISPs. (coughs) <coughs> currently <coughs> excuse me currently because the FCC classifies ISPs as telecommunications companies they're forced to abide by the same basic regulations that for example keep phone companies from deliberately providing you with a bad connection unless you pay to upgrade to a better one but the FCC's current proposal would reclassify ISPs as information companies instead of telecommunications companies. This would essentially abolish the regulations in place to protect Internet users' equal, unfiltered access to bandwidth and data, the building blocks of of a neutral Internet, in favor 
of an unregulated free market with little to no accountability from the ISPs due to a lack of government oversight regarding how ISPs distribute their services to Internet users. In fact, if Pi has his way, ISPs would not be subject to FCC re restrictions at all, but would instead fall under the purview of the Federal Trade Commission, which has a huge problem for, web for websites, Internet privacy advocates, and advocates for a free, open Internet. The FCC's potential repeal of the 2015 net neutrality ruling would ask ISPs to voluntarily agree not to slow down Internet speeds or restrict user access to data, but the efficiency of such a request would be questionable at best. <clears throat> That's because prior to the 2015 ruling, major ISPs in the U.S. had already been accused of throttling speeds and degrading service to their customers. And even after the 2015 regulations took hold, they only did so much. ISPs like Verizon, Comcast, and AT&T have tried over the years to throttle bandwidth under various, under various guises. I'm going to continue in just a second. I want to get Boyd in here. I saw him come on, but I didn't have a chance to grab him. Restrict access to competitive services and even block political messages on their servers. And there's a huge problem with Pay's plan to make ISP regulation the FTC's responsibility, which is simply that the FTC is an enforcement agency, not a regulatory one. That is, the FTC, or Federal Trade Commission, has no ability to create or enforce new regulations against potential abuses of net neutrality because while the Federal Communications Commission can enact regulations for how ISPs must behave, the Federal Trade Commission is really only legally able to enforce existing rules against ISPs after the FCC has established them. So since the FCC would be throwing its own regulations out the window, the only regulatory action the FTC would be able to take would be to issue punishments after the fact if an ISP failed to actually adhere to any promise to obey net neutrality that it had voluntarily yeah. written into its own terms of service. Given the, U given the sheer number of ISPs that exist across the country and the enormous <clears throat> difficulty of policing them all to determine whether they are actually obeying their own voluntary agreements, to say nothing of taking action against them after they've already implemented many any harmful business practices, it's highly unlikely that the Federal Trade Commission would be for, would would be enforcing any meaningful regulation against ISPs. And given that these ISPs are now, thanks to Congress' recent controversial dismantling of Internet privacy laws, also able to sell your browser histories and Internet search histories without your consent, it's worrisome, to say the least, and that could potentially fall under the control of the federal agency with no power to regulate them. All of these factors have internet freedom advocates worried and have already heightened focus on today's protest. And perhaps even more worrisome, at least to anyone who supports net neutrality, is that protest is that the protest has also drawn plenty of cynicism that any amount of public comment or protest will sway the FCC from doing whatever it wants. One Republican lobbyist has already told Politico the protest isn't likely to gain any political traction, and on social media, many people have already questioned why sites haven't gone black in protest, as some have done in previous years. Still, the issue of net neutrality is one that unites many desperate internet 
communities. A glance at Reddit, for example, reveals prominent pro-net neutrality posts from numerous game gamer gators alongside posts from the technology community and more progressive voices. If nothing else, the day of action could remind us that some mm -hmm. issues are bipartisan and hopefully work to convince the FCC to keep the current regulations in place for the protection of everyone on the Internet. Now, there is a small one-line update. This post has been updated to reflect Tumblr's participation in the day of action. Now, that's just what Vox is saying about it. The Verge... Dot com posted a headline breaking down the FCC's proposal to destroy net neutrality. The agency is asking if we even need any rules at all. Now, it's a long read. I'm not going to get into that one because it's too long for me to go over. But that, that's another one that, that, that speaks volumes on this. And the last item comes from the FCC itself. Restoring Internet Freedom, Notice of Proposed Rulemaking. Proposes to restore the Internet to a light-touch regulatory framework by classifying broadband Internet access service as an information service and seeks comment on the existing rules governing Internet service providers' practices. And there's various uh, documents... Uh, that you can access on that and of course if you're in the chat room the uh, the links are there but you know I want to turn I, I want to get I want to get uh, Ron Reck uh, to, to, to comment first because he's the one that, that posted these links in the chat room but Ron I, ha I have to think that if if the FCC is successful in doing this uh -huh. What does that mean for many of the, uh, uh, for a lot of us who, like, for example, broadcasts like mine, yours, and God knows how many others, websites like, like I have uh, for news and op-ed and so forth, as well as YouTube and other video services, uh, and what could happen as a result if net neutrality goes down the tubes? Well, it's going to be, it's going to be, your your internet access can be priced in tiers. You're certainly it depends how much money you pay in. It depends how much speed you're going to get. That's one thing, but it's also going to cause a lot of disruption because some facts people can't afford it three four hundred fucking dollars a month for high speed internet. You know, big companies can handle that. That's not going to hurt them. But you know, um, it's it's going to be controlled what you can watch, content you can watch. It's going to pry into your personal information a lot now. And I've seen some of that happening, you know, where they ask, you know, you go to a website, they're wanting all your personal information up front, you know, who you are, what's your name, what's your, you know, where do you live, all this shit, you know. Uh, it, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be, a, it's going to be censoring the internet in reality. And it's going to change, it's going to be that, it's going to be a control market to where, you know, it's going to depend on the speed. And they're they're going to slow you fucking down. Unless you have serious money to be able to pay for higher speed internet, uh, it, but but it comes with a bunch of rules too. There again, you know, a lot of these you know websites will be gone. You know, you won't be able to go access websites like you used to, unless you're in that upper tier. You know, so it, it's it's going to be a fucking clusterfuck. You watch, it ain't going to work. It never would. Net, net neutrality is not what you, what it sounds like. That's for damn sure. Exactly. That's that's just what it is. They tried to shit in 2015, remember? And it didn't yeah. work out. You know, <clears throat> so it just it's just big corporations that want more control of this shit and they want to corner the market at the same time and you know, force people into having to spend more money to get access. You know. And that's what this is what's been now the FCC, you know, the whole thing I thought when Trump appointed this guy he was going to be more liberal with the FCC, you know, it not be such, you know, up people's ass every five fucking minutes. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's it's going to it's going to be a mixing bag of shit that we're going to see hit. It, it, we don't know. You know, nobody knows what it's all going to turn out to be in the long run. <clears throat> Bill, you're on mute. 
It's just, I mean, it's 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 a it's a cornering of the market system. You know, right now it's a free market. It's a free market. The internet's a free market. But when you regulate a free market, that means only certain people could regulate. You know, you're, you're going to next your next boss is going to be a corporation telling you what you can and cannot do on the internet. <clears throat> yeah, you ain't gonna be selling shit on eBay. You have to yeah. go to the company to sell your shit on eBay. Right. Right. Yeah. But you had to go through a broker. Anonymous, a couple of years ago, was all up in arms about net neutrality. Right. Yep. I'm sure that it's going to be a lot of hackers hit them. They're going to get hit hard, you know. There'll be hacker attacks. It's going to come. You know, they, we wouldn't go for this shit. Man. They ain't coming. We talking about Yeah. There ain't nothing wrong with the net way it is. Leave it the fuck alone, you know. <clears throat> Just because you want more out of it, fuck you, you know. It's crazy shit. I don't know, man. <clears throat> so basically, if I'm understanding this all correctly, what's going to end up happening is if the FCC gets its way, a lot of these uh, service providers like Verizon, Comcast, AT&T, and the like are going to be sitting there uh, basically uh, charging whatever they want, re reducing mm -hmm. our, our, our internet speeds and bandwidth. And, all right. Uh, also taking a lot of our personal information and giving it to whoever they want. That's right. <coughs> Including and not limited to whatever we were, whatever we search on the internet, whatever our history is in our browsers. Right, 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 right. They, like they already do that now. To tell you the truth, they actually do that shit. Uh, <coughs> but you know, they're just going to make it official now. Finally, there's a plan. Uh, like you know, our, our shows, George, they might wind up controlling it where we have to do precast system you know where you have to do our show then they had to check it to prove it you know we had to pay some company to actually check and approve the show and then they'll let us air it shit like that that's the kind of shit we'll be on show. straight con <laughs> so so basically we would have to do a pre-recorded show not a live show right <clears throat> right oh you could do a live show but it won't be aired until it's been approved you know, it's like how we do on skype we just all talk on skype shit like that you know, and who knows if it's going it's to affect Skype any. I mean, who knows, man? In other words, they're, they're, they're taking away your freedom of choice. Is what the fuck they're doing. Your freedom of speech, your freedom of choice, and everything else. In a nutshell, kind of. But like I said, we got to see how it plays out. I don't know the whole rules. I didn't read all the FCC links in there, too. They don't tell you much of shit. But, I mean, you know, you have to do a little more research on them. But, you know, hey. <clears throat> It's the way they're doing it, man. Remember that thing I used to tell you about freedom is a fucking lie. Welcome to the fucking communist world. Even with Trump in office, this shit's still going down. You know, and, uh, well, and this guy was appointed by Trump. So you know, who knows? He might be a secret agent for the liberals. Snuck in there. He Buffalo Johnny. All right. So, what do you all think? I heard that the child years ago, and the, how it's going to affect people um, in their pocketbook with access uh, websites. How it's going to affect, you know, website businesses and shit like that. <clears throat> so, yeah, back in. Uh, uh, 1999, 2000, 2001. They were they were leaning in that direction because they wanted to have they wanted to have their fingers in the pot too and have some access. Uh, and as you see, as since then, our, our our postal service has dropped down to nothing. They're closing post offices, so they're they're getting their fingers in there so that they can have a part or piece of the pie and get all the information at the same time anyway. Which, and restrict the information that you're allowed to see. Yes. Right. So all that free porno you guys used to enjoy watching, like on Pornhub, like you said earlier, George, you won't get that. Much. I don't watch freaking porno, pal. So if you I went? if I want so, if really? I want to see a naked woman, I want her in oh, my bed. Oh shit! I'm a VIP member at fucking Pornhub. <laughs> oh Jesus, man! That's I funny. will n I will never 
ever go to a site called Pornhub. But like I every said, time if I, I want, do a broadcast, if I want to see a naked do... female in my, in front of my face, she is going to be in my bed. Never mind well, on on my screen, on my TV well, screen, you know, or my computer screen. I'm into bestiality, so you don't know, like watching farm animals and you know <laughs> shit brother. like that. You know. I saw you know? I saw just one of those, and it wasn't I guess wasn't intended for me to see it, but that's what came up on the little reel. It was a damn old man screwing a pig. It was gross. Well, it's, in Mexico, they fuck donkeys. They actually, that's why do you, why do you, why do you think Ron has mules? Exactly. <laughs> I like some prime ass. <laughs> I got maybe you rented them out to the the gals for their shows on contracts. I got an eight hundred and fifty pound piece of pussy roaming around my yard right now. Seriously. <laughs> I thought Hillary was back here in New York. Did she gain weight? Well, yeah, we just got her last week, and you know, we, oh. she's out there grazing. Oh, Only thing she sure. fights the other mules on the hay, but you know that's what happens with big mules. So, uh, so are you going to name one of them Hillary when you get a new, new one or what? <laughs> I wouldn't name. I wouldn't name my worst enemy Hillary, Mike. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I have a niece named Hillary. I kid you not. Uh oh. I have a niece named Hillary, and I feel so sorry for that poor girl. You know. Yeah. I pissed her off one time. We was at a family get together quite a few years back. I said, "You know, you're starting to look like Hillary Clinton, really, Uncle Ronnie, you motherfucker." <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Clinton, how's it going? How's good? <coughs> how's the one kid you had that's a lesbian? I think. Jesus. All my mother prince. Who knows? It, it's getting where these the the political fucking world anymore is getting to be a fucking massive joke to me. You know, really. The the women out there make me ashamed to even be classified in that uh, role. Well, the one real freak in nature, I think, there's two freaks in nature that I've seen in politics in my life. One was Janet Reno, though. That was one fucking linebacker of a looking woman. Um, the other one is nasty. Nancy Polowski. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. She thinks she's something, but she's old, wore out, old fucking saddlebags, all she is, you know. And she's dumber than a bag of hammers. <clears throat> so, hammers you know. are dumb. I thought it was rocks. It's, well, rocks, hammers, fucking screwdrivers, or whatever you want to call her. She's dumb as something can't think for itself. <clears throat> you know, so I'm, I'm not a fan of hers either. Uh, I used to have the hot Sir Janet Reno. Until I realized that she was a woman, you know, um, or a man <laughs> looking like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you know, she was from the Carter family. I liked it when Saturday Night Live made fun of her. They made fun of her. I think it was Will Ferrell dressed up like her, some shit. It was funny as hell. Uh, I might have to look that up now. God damn it. <laughs> but anyway, Firefox, you know. Browser has got to pop up every time on about this net neutrality on the site. Every time you pop up, I, I don't think Trump would even allow it. They're talking about it and everything else, but he's into as a businessman. That's not good for business, and that's that would you can't tell me that antitrust shit wouldn't apply here. That's going to come in big time because a lot of these markets have only one company that supplies the internet access so th that's now when they do something like this uh, you know this antitrust fucking shit's got to kick in here I, I don't see them getting away with it nice try I mean they think they're going to make money on it but that could even mark open the market up more, more where now the people, that have the, the people that have the cable that are going to the houses, that's the only show and the only option for people right now. But if you have the people with the cable and they start playing games like this, say they, by some miracle, that's allowed to happen. Now, now it's worth it for the satellite providers to come in and say, we'll give you unlimited and we're going to cut the rate cheaper than the guys that have the cable. You watch how many dishes show up on those houses. Your satellite internet? Yeah. 
it, that's pretty. It's pretty bad, Mike. You know, they're going to work on it. They'll work now. There's going to be a, a, a there's a there's a market for it if these providers with the cable start playing games with the internet like this. You know what I mean? I mean, it's it's capitalism, man. Here's a chance. I've got all these customers, millions of customers now that are pissed off at their providers and they have no options. Let's give them an option. You know, and they'll work on it. Yeah. You know, somebody will come up with a solution. They'll put research and development to work, and they'll they'll come up with a better system than what satellite than what uh, the satellite providers have right now, which is, you know, not that great. But I'm, I'm sure they will because they'll do it on purpose just to compete with the cable companies. I mean, they're, we're lucky, like where we are in New York. You might have two or three different companies that you could choose from. But there are parts of the country where there's only one choice. That's all you have. If you want cable, that's where you got to go. You know, people won't have any choice. You pay or you're not, you don't pay. It sucks. But it'll open the market up for new companies to pop up with new options and competition like crazy. You know, at first, those companies, those cable companies are going to make a lot of money. They'll start ripping people off if they allow this to happen. But I just don't see the government allowing it. I, 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 don't, I don't see them allowing it. And like everybody, like Ron and everybody said, they tried this before and it failed. Well... Again. <clears throat> no, I'm not going well, there's, there's, there's a bigger yeah. issue at stake, too. If, if, if this worst case scenario, if this turns into, into what, what they're talking about, whatever you search for on the web, okay? Whatever you, is in your internet history, they they will. <laughs> if this goes through, they'll be they will have the, they will have the right, and they don't need your permission to take everything in your history, all of your searches, all your personal information, and give it to, and sell it to, or give it to whomever they choose. I think they do it already. Yeah, you should actually clear that stuff. I do it two or three times a day. Yeah. Um, if, if I'm online, that will, um, you got to uh, clear your browser uh, history. Um, you need a shredder that goes into all the uh, temporary files. It gets rid of all that. <coughs> they go bye bye. I mean, it makes your your browsing faster and all too because you're not bogged down by their their tracking shit. I mean, look, look at the uh, look at the uh, the New York Department Division of what is it, Motor Vehicles, Department of Motor Vehicles, or whatever. They sell they sell your 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 license history, accidents, everything about you, personal address. The state sells it, and they make millions. And we don't even know about it. Remember that article in the paper? They sell our information all the time. We never know who's got that shit. It sucks. Well, that's like. <clears throat> so go ahead. I was just going to say, I got an email today from Google Maps telling me I had uh, a high number of likes for my photo. I didn't put a photo on Google. But I, when I went and looked, it's a picture of my house with the flag out there. What? And 128 people have looked at it. <clears throat> What's she talking about? She got a notification from Google telling her how many people liked a picture, or probably Facebook. That oh, okay. She... On Google Maps. Oh, Google Maps. Yeah, well, what's funny is about that is 
I, I get the same thing, and I never post anything on Google for them to, to, to even see. What do you get notices for that people like, George? Well, let's see. I had taken a picture, and which I did not post on the, on the web or anything, but I took a picture of when I was, I took a picture at uh, Dunkin' Donuts one day when I was sitting there using their, uh, having, having coffee and stuff like that. I just took a, a random picture. And I took a picture of a sign that was across the street in uh, a restaurant window regarding a Greek festival that was coming up at the time. Next thing I know, I'm getting a message from Google saying over a thousand people like my pictures. And it never left your camera? And it never left my camera. Well, that shit would make me question reality. Well, it did me because it's not that hard to figure out with the Google Maps. How did he get it out of his fucking camera? If he didn't put the SD card in his computer and put it online, how did Google get it? They went into his camera? You know, I've seen that. Like, like the, the pictures that I sent you guys in the chat room there. Uh -huh. And that FFNOP thing, I didn't post those on my Facebook page. I didn't download them into my computer. They're on my iPhone. But I went to my Facebook tonight. When I went to look at it, the first thing that came up was all those pictures came up in a row and I said, well, do you want to post these? Everything you do on your phone goes on the Internet regardless. Your phone's Internet capable. That's why that shit happens. But I didn't download them off the phone. It doesn't but, matter. They're on the phone, and I can still access them. But Facebook grabbed them right away and said, do you want to load these? Yep. I yep. want to Facebook same thing, post. same thing with your computer. As long as that thing's hooked up to that internet, they, it's vulnerable. I don't care what it is. Huh. Yeah, your phone's internet live all the time. You just don't know it. Yeah. Well, it has, to, it has to have the... Uh, it has to be have an active connection to the internet my phone doesn't have an active internet connection to the internet unless I turn it on yes it does it has it regardless whether you got it on or off I'm serious George in the next in, in the next few years everything will be IP based That might be kind of interesting, though. If you got to go to the bathroom and it's winter time and you're driving home, you can tell the phone, "Warm the toilet seat for me." Yep. I mean, that's what it's going to come down to. You can shut lights off and everything while you're across the country now in your house. I had Lower a state trooper take a piss in my bushes today. It was on camera. Oh. Mm-hmm. Who was holding the camera? I got cameras all over my property, Billy. Anywhere you're at, it's going to be watched. And it's recorded right to a computer. Did you go out and hose it out and send him a bill for cleaning it up? No, he just asked me if there was a good place you can take a piss. I said, pick your spot, brother. Oh, all right. There you go. I didn't give a shit. I didn't right. care. Piss outside the whole time. Oh, at least he asked. Now, there again, if he's seen me doing it, he'd probably arrest me for indecent exposure. Oh, no shit. Well... No, he's my girl boy. Young guy. Yeah, I just noticed that thing with the pictures. I noticed it doing that now over the past five days. My phone it, it never used to do that. I think it has I, to do with that, that cloud. No, I don't use the cloud. I don't I either, but it's I got stuff in it. I never put anything to the cloud. I uninstalled it. No, well, I don't use the cloud for anything. But it keeps reinstalling. Oh, shit. And then there was one article that I read that I don't know if I believe it. It says that you can access this and clear it. And they don't try to hide it from you. But Google, through your phone, even without you knowing it, records every voice conversation, anything close to your phone, and uses it for analyzing voice recognition for them working on their, you know, voice recognition for bettering their systems. And that they allow you to, you know, to delete all of the records 
and they're on there. And the way you can find them is you go into uh, your history, Google history, and you might have to go into advanced, but you got to be logged in. And there are audio files in there, and you can listen to them. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I just read that today in an article. It's like, what? Someone take a look. I did, but on my phone, I, I can't access it. And I don't remember what the code was for Google for me to log in. I don't know. I haven't logged into Google in a long time. I don't know if that's true. If that's true, that's pretty creepy. Well, this thing's constantly recording everything you're saying 24 hours a day on Google. Mm hmm. On the other one. Yeah, I remember, you know, people they fucking forget and realize about these fusion centers. That's all they collect is data. <coughs> Anything goes through a cell phone, on the internet, because the cell phone itself has such internet, it's internet capabilities now. Uh, it's there. I mean, you ever, okay, check this out. Have you ever had, like, you get, like, you download something, and it gives you, like, uh, McPhee security service? You know, then you and it downloads it automatically. And you don't didn't want it in the first place. You know what I'm saying? But you can't get rid of the motherfucker, right? You know, shit like that. That's kind of how the system is. Oh, don't don't you remember if you if you owned an iPhone for a long time years ago? There was one model iPhone that came out that automatically it downloaded a whole bunch of songs from some band. I didn't want that stuff, and then it stays with you. It's hard to get that out of there. Oh, so yeah, it does shit on its own. Uh, I'm listening, guys. I did, this legal mumbo jumbo that I got sent. It, it, it's like you're asking the same question over and over again. Yeah, it's it comes down to the chair that you're sitting on. Does it have a cushion, Julie? Yeah. Okay, if you're leaning on your right cheek on the cushion now that's one inch deeper than the left cheek there's a different charge for that and the government can charge you uh there's a, a legal term for it i forget what it is but if you lean on your left cheek now you're compressing the cushion a little bit more than your right cheek does now if you sit square then the court can't come after you because you're compressing the cushion an exact amount from both of your ass cheeks <laughs> that is that ass. That is ass cheek regulation. Yes, uh, those are ass cheek regulations. Yes, yeah. Julie, you have that, to be. That, that you have is to be up to date with like, it. See, they went. Let's read this right quick, and, and and Julie, what it comes down to, a lot of people don't realize, it, is a whole different set of rules for ass holes as opposed to the ass yeah. cheek regulations. And, yes. and, it, and it, now, you, did you hear the latest news lately about this? No, what was that? You're going to have to start <laughs> take when you take a shit. You're going to shit on a scale and wait and get taxed for it. Yep, you get power. taxed for it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. You, get, you get taxed for taking a shit. It, it, it's, it's life insurance, and they have, I have MS, which is a neurological problem. But they list in B, cancer, tumor, diabetes, or any disorder or disease of the blood or immune system. Okay, yeah, I, I, immune system. But I go down just one more below that, and C says... Seizures or any disorder or uh, disease of the brain or nervous mental system, including anxiety, depression, and or mood disorders. It, it, I, a neurologist takes care of me, so I, they got it the wrong place, but I guess I can just write it in. They asked me that, my insurance too. They asked me if I had any mental problems or stuff like that, and I said, fuck yeah, I'm a rock musician, you dumb motherfucker. Of course I have problems. <laughs> Well, I usually don't mess with this stuff, but the MOA, Military Officers Association, has uh, sent me uh, female. You guys get screwed. I was I, I was sitting looking at the, the premiums, and I thought it was for both, female and male. It wasn't. One side's male, one's the other female. But whatever my premium is at my age right now, it gets locked in uh, at a 10, 15, or 20-year uh Great. Uh, it, 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 it won't change like how I, when I had it, it started changing every five years or every year on your birthday. So mine would be locked in for 15 years until I'm 75. But I'm one year past the date where I can't 
go for 500,000, I can only go for 250,000. I don't think I'm even going to do that because I'm not going to get to spend it. I was just going to say, what are you going to do with all that money after you die? Well, the thing is, is if something happens where I have, where they tell me that I've got something that's got, that I'm going to die, uh, I get half of the policy right up front. If I die, this policy uh, hands out right, right off the bat $2,500 for loved ones to get out here, travel, that type of stuff to get out here. Uh, see, I think I think with life insurance, okay, it should be what, what it's called, life insurance. And that is, okay, you go to the doctor, they go, oh, you got a lump, we're going to do a biopsy. He's like, oh, you got cancer. We're going to do a scan. Oh, shit. You, you, got a lot, you got six months to live. An insurance company should pay you, okay, your complete um, amount. So now you can take that money, and for the six months, while you're still alive, you can spend it, have some fun, treat your friends, live it up, right? You can't take it with you. I mean, right. you know, put, put they two, give you half of it. Right, put a thousand or two aside, so they can cremate you when you're done. You know what I mean? Somebody spread your asses over, you know, the ocean or something. <laughs> but that's a, that's how it should work. You know, and then if you're like, well, no, I'm going to die in six months. I have a million dollar policy. I'm not going to blow it. I'm going to let my family have it. You know, maybe I'll take a trip to Vegas. Oh, I still feel good. Go to the funny ranch, come home and die. And you all can have the rest. <clears throat> That's how I think it should be. Yeah. Let's go into remission. Just pay her $25 a month back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll finish this up tomorrow. I just, it said open immediately, time dated material, so. It's, not, it's an ad. It sounds like an ad, Julie. Huh? It sounds like an ad. No, it's not. A, it's for the Military Officer Association. It's a special, it's a special package for military personnel. I think that's the American House. Legion, even though I haven't been a member of the American Legion. We're probably going on two years now. I I still get stuff from them. Oh no! I my like membership. Going, I have to I have to pay for my membership to keep my spot where where Art was at. But the the premium is uh, for two hundred thousand. It it locks in for I I think it's twenty years for forty eight dollars and sixty cents. Yeah, I was yeah. You ain't going to be able to spend it later. Yeah, unless you have, you know, young kids that are going to need that money to survive after you're gone. Oh, gee, I've been sitting here for over five years, and not one of my kids has come to visit. <laughs> I was not really not. And they're, all, and, and they're all adults, right? Yeah, 39, yeah. 40. Okay. Yeah. So, they're, so they're, you know, they're, they're, they're set in their life. <clears throat> you know what I mean? They're waiting, for me. they're, they're waiting for me to die so they can sell the house and split it between the three of them. Uh, and the two that don't have houses are going to buy houses with them. See, fuck Maybe that. For That's bullshit, man. They don't, <laughs> care about you. they don't care about the house. <laughs> they're wishing you dead. Oh, my God. I would not I would not pay $48 a month so they can fucking, after I'm long and gone, fucking... You know, shit. When when, when Chris's yeah, I mean, dad I, I, died, I, I, Chris, when Chris's dad died, the one daughter had a uh, an ATM, a debit card. She was draining the account. Chris was the only one that got paid because I made sure that she stayed in touch with the attorney, and you know. Uh, then we got in touch with her sister, and I made all kinds of fucking. Not they weren't threats. Well, I, they, I, weren't just, threats. they were facts. I'm and too so, radical. I'm I, I'm I'm not the grandma type. So I'm been told. When that check came from her, because it was written by her, because she was in charge of everything, the lawyer said, 
cash that check now. Get it in the bank. So she's got that debit card and she's pulling money out every day. She said, and her, let me see, Chris's brother and sister got nothing. Except for the brother got the house because he was left the house. And he had uh, insurance on that if he died. It has to be paid off. But yeah, she was spending all that money. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I didn't want it to, I pay the premiums and when I die, that it just goes by the wayside to me. That's like, why that with toilet paper and. <laughs> well, it completely fractured the family. Nobody talks to anybody now at all. They all hate each other because of that. Because o over the money situation. You know? Yeah. And I felt bad and I was like, well, call Eddie up and see it, you know. Tell him, say, look, you know, you're not going to get the cash part of it. You got the house, you know, I'll, you know, I'll give you a quarter of what I was able to get out of the account. And you know something he was cool about? He's like, you know something, keep it. He said, I got the house. I'm good. I'm financially sound. And then she couldn't get in touch with her other sister because she got nothing at all. Zero. Look, this, this is something for everybody to remember. And the only reason I'm repeating it is because it happened to me. Uh, Art's niece and nephew, they never had kids. They only had the niece and nephew. They were older than me. When Art died, uh, the nephew got extremely upset to find out that I got the home, the property, and everything in it. Um, so he, he gave me he gave me a lot of grief. Uh, I wrote checks for both of them for over $100,000 each that was uh, money that was put aside, and he broke the trust and put it in a, an account. Uh, and I, I got the rest of this, and a lot of it is to look at this. And liquidate it because it's World War II stuff, and it's like ivory, and people don't understand the value of it. Ivory, you're lucky you didn't get arrested. Well, I don't think they were gonna. Art, Art got it while he was serving. Doesn't I doesn't matter when he got it. There are huge, big time, in, insane laws against the sale of ivory, and that's international. Julie, here in the U.S. Uh, up until I think a year or two ago, they strengthened the ivory laws to the point that antique shops were going to the government and complaining because the law was so strict that you couldn't legally sell a, an old piano because of the ivory that was on the keys. And see, these are Netsuki little figurines. And, and they're worth and, a ton. But, <laughs> yeah, but they're illegal. You could have been arrested for selling them. I the, did not and sell them. I, they're uh, still in there. I'm just don't there. don't advertise. Don't advertise that you got them to anywhere. I yeah. got an 1894 Nelson upright piano with tiger stripe maple. Yep. And the keys Beautiful. are ivory and that motherfucker, and I, I cannot sell it. Yeah. I can give it away, but I cannot sell it. No, I didn't even know about giving it away. They don't want that. They, but they changed the law. I had ownership. Allowing I had pianos. ownership before that. Well, that law hit Mike. It's grandfather oh. done. Well, the only place I ever went to uh, to look is to the Netsuki Society that uh, it, it comes from the name of the night in Japan, which they sit around and carved with. Uh, there are people, they have their own society. I had a hard time thinking. Julie, societies are great, but these are laws that are created by governments and everything regarding ivory. And uh, so the societies are wonderful. And if you're a member of a society, that might be more reason for the government agencies to come and raid your house. Figure, yeah. oh, he, he belongs to the Natsuki. Oh, yeah, I bet you he's got some ivory. Let's yeah. hit his house. Let's do this shit. We'll sell it yeah. on the black market. And you know what? Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, that, there was one antique shop down here on the Cape that I went to, and they they said that this is this auction house um, that, I don't know what government agency it is that goes after that shit, but they showed up and said, you can't sell this, you can't sell this, this is ivory, we're confiscating this. And the auctioneer came over and said, do you even know what the fuck you're doing? That's not ivory. This is scrimshaw. It's whale's tooth. You don't even know what you're looking at. What are you doing with this government agency? You don't know what the job you're doing. And it, it turned into a mess. They ended up leaving him alone because the agent didn't know what he was looking at. They don't know what Scrimshaw is, even. These these okay. these cops, or whatever you call them, are idiots. They don't know their job. 
but it's they've got a lot of power. They can go in and take it. Yeah, well, that's a shame because seven of those at five thousand dollars a pop. Julie, I'm telling you, full, don't advertise it. Yeah, don't, don't oh, put it on I open market. It. No, I don't. I don't. I just did. <clears throat> it's all over the internet now. They know. Too late. They know. Look yeah, out your window. Do you see any midgets? <laughs> I've seen a lot, lot around the hospital the last couple of weeks. It's the guys with the, the fedoras with the overcoats. They're running around bumping into each other. You watch for them. <laughs> oh. I smell ivory. She has it in there. <laughs> I, got some, I got some in wood, too. I mean... And vases that he brought back, but I can't read it. It's Japanese. No. I mean, I went into one antique shop. I won't tell you what state or anything else. And that was within the past year. And the guys, the guy uncovered two ivory tusks. And they are big motherfuckers. And they, are, oh, they were old. And these things were totally carved. And they were Chinese. And they were, even before the law was... Thing, these things were worth thousands and thousands of dollars. And uh, I know the antique dealer, and so he didn't mind showing it to me, but he had them all covered up so nobody else could see them. And I said, what the fuck are you going to do with that? And he said, they're already sold. And I said, how? He said, there's an underground market. He said, there's a doctor from uh, far away that bought these, and he's flying here, renting a car, and driving them back to his state. So you got to be kidding me. So no, that's what it comes down to now. It's an it's like a black market for some of this stuff. So there are ways still. Can oh, you yeah. imagine that? But that's what it's come down to. And these things were phenomenal. They look like they belong in a museum. He yeah. said, "I made, I sold them for a lot of money." And uh, he said, "But he said if they saw this, the government, they they gone." No. But it, yeah, I could use the money, but it's such a rare thing. Well, it isn't even done anymore. It was during that era, and I'm setting it, I'm setting, holding on to something that does belong in the museum. Uh, and then there's a lot of stuff out there that's reproduction. Do you remember, Ron, when was that? Was that the 70s or the 80s when it was a flood? Of fake fake ivory carvings, the Oriental. I think that was in the middle seventies, wasn't it? Do you remember? They even had yeah. tables yeah. and. And they and, and they, right. they oh dipped them in tea to make them look old. But I mean, it was yeah. some sort of weird plastic or yeah, fiber it glass. Looked, it was a yeah, fiber something. Glass. Yeah, and there was a shitload of that stuff showing up in the market, and uh -huh. people were buying it thinking it was real, and it wasn't real. Yeah. Oh yeah. <sighs> Oh, my Disney pin, my Disney Ania. Wait, well, hey, kids, I hate to leave a good party, but I need to rock out of here because I got to be up early. I might have to run to the fucking hospital again. I didn't uh, walk well. 10 city blocks twice today through the hospital trying to find this motherfucker. Uh, it was crazy. I, you know, I had to walk all the way to both sides, the farthest end of the hospital, which is fucking massively long, like six blocks long, to walk through this hospital. Right? Do, you, do you have any rear differential? Old differentials, uh, like rear ends, hanging around your farm. Yeah, all kinds of rear ends. Well, okay, we, do you have any way that you can get a cover off one of them and clean it up, and then dent it? And then, if he has a sense of humor, once he's feeling better and you're sure he's going to be all right, then hand that to him and give him a bill. Say, listen, I, I, you damaged the pumpkin when it hit you, and look mm -hmm. what you did to it. And here's a bill. The only thing you got to replace it, and it is the charge for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he asked Mike, me. You he did. He asked me, man. Yes. <laughs> but he asked me. He goes. He goes. He goes. Did I fuck up the truck? I'll pay for it. If I fucked up the house, I'll pay for it too. I said, man, nothing. You didn't hurt fucking nothing. Yeah. Only thing got hurt was you. You know. Yeah, Even though the fucking wall of my house is fucking caved in, but you know, hey, he doesn't know it. I don't want. I'll, we'll have it fixed before he gets out. You know, before he gets around. Oh shit! I, I, I How bad? How bad is that? We'll, we'll have to pull the wall all out. We'll have to rebuild the whole thing. <clears throat> Fuck. I back. Where'd the guy run into? He got <laughs> ran over by my truck. Oh. 
I he was know. working. He was, he was working on his truck, and the guy dropped the drive shaft without shocking the wheels, and the the thing rolled over mm. him, and then the truck went into the house, rolled into the house. But that, now might be a time, Ron. If you, you got, if it's that big of a wall, you might want to put an, extend the house, put another room on it. Shit, it'd be easy time to do it. That, no. Uh, well, my <laughs> wife says I always want a new front door on this motherfucker. So here we go. Oh, that's it. <clears throat> you know. Make the make the grand baby uh, uh, playroom. Well, she's already got that. I mean, with uh, the, the you know, it's just the back porch of the house. I mean, you know, oh. I mean, it's a part of the house. It's concrete. You, originally, on this house, it was a uh, carport, and we boxed it in and made rooms out of it. You know, utility uh. room and so expand it. Well, good luck with him. I hope he's doing better. Yeah, he's doing cool. I mean, like I said, I'm in the morning. I'm going to. They're hopefully going to release him tomorrow, and I'll take him. You know, take him home into Lincoln. You know, oh. um, so he's at he's at comfortable ride back because everything else we own here are trucks. We, you know, my dad that's his car. Yeah. I don't particularly own cars, so I have cars I own, but I, they're collectors and I don't drive them. Uh, right. But you know, the heat starts. You know, road ready. So all right, we'll we'll see you like later on. You know, I'll see you tomorrow night. All right, behave yourselves. Uh, yeah. Good night. Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be the same as uh, tonight. I'm just gonna do it on Mixler and YouTube. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, I'll catch you. It depends on how busy I am with shit tomorrow, you know. So you gotta help him out, take care of business. So anyway, I gave his wife a big stack of cash earlier tonight. So right. shit. whatever you, you need, just call me, guys. You know. So all right, guys, I will see you tomorrow. Behave yourselves. Right. See ya. George. Uh, yeah. He said he was handing out big stacks of cash. Maybe we should hit him up. <laughs> I mean, how many of us are on this call? I mean, we had a chance. Did we blow it or I, what? I, I, well, I finally had a chance. I'm, I'm afraid to say I had to. I must have blown it because then it didn't even cross my mind. To ask. Shit, we could have said. I, did, oh, I had to lined up. The didn't today. cross my mind there, bub. <laughs> what can I say? I blew it. Uh, so I could go to my class reunion. This it was everything uh, to it. My 14th, 15th, 16th. My class reunion. Yeah. Is this weekend? Uh, and I put out the word, and I uh, I went to a site, and it three of the people that were available for this area I couldn't do it. The other one, oh yeah, she could do it and leave on Sunday morning because they were leaving town, which is fine because I'd head back, but. She sits down and we're talking and as she's doing the meet and greet with the kids, um, she lets me know that it's not $25 a night. I have three dogs, so it's $75 a night. Really? And I was like, oh. I said, I can't afford that. I said, that doesn't even make sense for me to shell out $150 uh, plus I have to pay to go over to Eastern Oregon and back. I mean, that's expensive. That's a lot of money. You, d d I don't understand what's so hard about it. What is so hard about it? Air conditioning, the refrigerator, freezer are full, big screen TV, Xbox, the computer. All you have to do is be a warm body here and acknowledge the kids every once in a while. But they don't even, they don't even bother me unless I forgot to give them their treat. I wonder that's, maybe that's a good new business to go into. Dog really? sitting. Dog oh, speaking of dogs, George, did you see that link I sent you about people that now identify themselves as dogs? Yeah, I saw that. Oh what my the fuck is? God. Are you? These people are sick. Identify as dogs. It said something like ten thousand people. Hold on a second. Oh my god. These people feel that and they dress up and they act like it. They eat the food out of bowls on the floor. Uh, and they, they act like a dog and they feel that they identify as dogs and they have sex with their masters. And uh, like, it's bizarre. Is she, is she blonde? Real good? Nice tits? Send her over, please. No. If, if George, if George could find the article, you gotta see, you gotta see the picture of the article. I found they, it. They dress up like dogs. These people are sick, man. That's crazy. Yeah. All right, you, for all of you in the chat room, here it comes. All right, I'll be quiet. Uh, here, you're going to read it? or This will be good for a laugh. 
Mm. Pretty much everybody except for Mike is in the chat room. Oh my goodness! Yeah, like that. <laughs> oh my god! That's, that's what, what's that's it in? Funniest Shitless. fucking thing I ever saw. Where did you put it? In the chat room. Oh. Mixler chat room. Oh my gosh! I've got to share that one. Holy cow! Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> You mean he dressed up is is dressed up like a damn dog? Yeah, damn. Dalmatian. Damn. And some of the comments on here. Crazy. Oh my God. Is this the mentally ill saying they want to poop in the yard at the end of a leash? <laughs> one comment wrote. Holy Another one says, "Identify as a dog. Have them spayed or neutered." <laughs> Look at the face on the on the woman sitting next to the guy. Yeah, she looks scared shitless. Yeah. Well, if I had somebody that that was dressed up like a freaking dog like that, I'd be scared too. I'd be wondering what their what what, what the fuck their mental disease is. Jesus. Ah, theater te uh, technician. He left his well, fiance because that's, he didn't that's like, like it. With me, I, 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 when I was in the military, I, 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 I people took one look at me with in, in my in my uniform, and they were like, "He's a soldier. Give me a break." <laughs> but if I saw somebody dressed up like that. I would oh, be is... like, call the guys with the white coats and the butterfly nets for this motherfucker. Oh, there's I'd sick like people to... out there. I, I'd like to know what Simon Cow would think about that. <laughs> What's that, Julie? He likes animals. I'd like to. I'd like to know what Simon Cow would think about something like that. Simon Cow would take a look at the, one look at that and probably sit there in shock. He wouldn't know what to make of it. He probably yeah. knows about it. Because they said it's popular in England. So he's got to know about it. That's weird shit. Yes, it is. If a man simply identifies as a woman, he is now allowed to use ladies' rooms in many public schools and retail stores across America. But if, but what if he identifies as a dog? That's right. There's now a major movement in which humans... "Quote unquote," identify as the furry little critters. God Almighty! Yeah, the, you know Somebody what? Give me a freaking. When, when uh, these two people uh, divorced or went their separate ways, the family was cleaning out the house, uh, and the younger brother uh, and older sister uh, found a bunny costume. With the front area cut with a hole in it, in the front. Oh, so, brother. Yes, where the the male genitalia would sit. Mm -hmm. Rabbit. Yeah. I I, I, I kind of got that based on what, on you saying they cut a hole in the front. I I. I hey. <coughs> I, I, I got uh, that from Tom's little brother. Hey, this would beat everything. You know, back when I had my house there and my girlfriend was living over there with me, I rigged my bed with a handcuff rack, okay, and tie downs. It took me about five hours. Oh, my God. It was great. I did myself on that one. Pat myself on the back. What did you I do? Recommend, <laughs> you tie I recommend that. Yeah. Especially with a handcuff rack. You know, she, hey, she she was kinky. I mean, I'm, I was pretty dodgy. <laughs> oh, wow, Lord. I mean, I mean tie downs on you know ankle tie downs and wrist tie downs. He was into shit. into BDSM bondage. or whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah, bondage man. I mean I'm going woo. God damn. I need to call her back. Damn. <laughs> yeah. I I had a <laughs> I had a friend of mine who lived next door to a couple that was into into all that bondage shit and everything. He was allowed to take a picture of the one room that they set up. Just for that. I mean, it had freaking uh, all kinds of weird shit. I mean, we're talking cat and we're talking cat, uh, cat and nine tails, whips, chains. You name it, they had it in that room. And I, 
I, I said, you got to be kidding me. He said, I got the fuck out of there so fast because they asked me if I wanted to participate. And he says, no, and ran out the fucking door. And I says, good for you. There's some sickos out there. Yeah, there is. I divorced one. I mean. Now, is, having, is, is, is being with two women at the same time, is that sick or is that good? No, that's not like, I mean, dressing up in a bunny outfit. Fucking, oh. like, yeah, no. Those two girls would have to be best friends with each other because I'd have a smack down. I mean, that would, that would mean somebody that's really into, like, uh, taking vitamins and shit or something. Good for him. Yeah, you don't sleep. Yeah, you look at that. Here, listen to this third paragraph in this, in this, in this item uh, under the picture. It says, the trend exploded in the last 15 years, particularly among homosexual men who enjoy wearing <coughs> leather and dog-like hoods, according to London's Guardian. The wannabe pooches also love to have their stomachs rubbed and their ears tickled. <laughs> they fat squeaky dogs. I can't even read this fucking shit. This is fucking nuts. It's fucking sick. I'm like, come here, man. I need to take you to the vet and get you fucking neutered. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, right? It's like... part of the fucking deal. It's part of the... I, le- wonder, uh, I wonder if he sticks his nose up uh, his uh, his uh, partner's ass and then starts licking it. Oh, my God. I don't even want to think about that. That's that's that's, that's one them. picture I don't yeah. want in my head. Well, is somebody yeah, commenting on him? do in a dog outfit. Too funny, they said. I suppose they can't be faulted for sticking a nose inside a, a stranger's crotch or humping a, a stranger's they leg. Too? They, do they eat dog food? Yep. Or pee yeah. on a, a, a fire hydrant. I mean, come on. These people have rights, and it's being racist and discriminatory to not allow them to be the animal which they identify with. <laughs> Jesus. So they can just, you know, pee on a fire hydrant out open during the day. Anywhere, like, you know, Times Square, dressed like a dog. I don't think fish. they could. I don't think they could pull that one off. I, I really don't. I mean, Especially I guess as long as the owner had a doggy bag to pick up the fucking or the poop bag, they could take a shit right in the middle of Times Square, right? <laughs> as long as they got, the, as long as they got the duty bag to pick up the yeah. shit. Yeah. It went down further from that, guys. Sherry, she, after I just told you what the guy said, she goes, then let me proudly be the first one to discriminate. If you act like a dog, you should be treated like a dog. If it's a female dog, can I call her a bitch? What is it going to stop? How mentally deranged do you have to be to behave like this or support this? Disgusting. I'd be like, you hear a crate training? You hear a crate training? Come out of the crate, a piss, take a shit, and you eat. Go back in the crate. I don't know, man. I th- I'm going to start watching my neighbors to make sure I don't see anybody <laughs> build, building a, building an ark. Because I think God, God's going to flush this place. No, what you need to what you need to look for is like a like a whipping uh, thing on the outside by the porch, or maybe something that where you could you know strap somebody up, you know, you know like a you know a frame or something, you know just I don't know anything about that. No, no, no. <laughs> I went to I went to that flea market, George. It's right next to Route 84. You know that the Duchess Market there. Oh, the 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 Duchess Mall. Yeah, and uh, you know the antique mall that's over there. You know, yeah. you know by Home Depot, and and they had a one of the antique dealers. I I, w- I went to buy it. They had a really nice fire hydrant. And I said, fuck, if it's like 100 bucks, I'll put that in my backyard for the dogs. I think that'll be funny. I'll have my own fire hydrant. And I said, how much? $350. I said, uh, no. I want to pay you $350. My dogs can pee on it. It's not going to happen. Even 100 bucks is a lot. But oh. I guess pe- people collect that shit. Now Now that I see this article like this, I can see why. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> so Are you kidding me? One of my friends through the cancer reunion thing that we had here on MSN years ago, I, I happen to see her Facebook post, and I don't see her post very often. And exactly what you were just talking about. She made one 
for her her dog out back and it, it, it's all filled with it with uh, sand or dirt or something and it's a big area and she's got rocks around it smack dab in the middle of it she has a uh fire hydrant it looks like it's made out of risen or or, or plastic but either way it, that's the first place you're going to go to raise their leg and I, don't know I know it didn't cost a bunch of money because she's she's not uh, she's uh, more disabled. Remember the weird ones? And I don't know if they exist anymore. Down in New York City, remember how the fire hydrants looked like just a tube? They had no shape to them. It was like a smooth tube. Remember those in New York City? The weird looking things. It was. It didn't look like a traditional fire hydrant. Oh, oh, um, oh, wow. They were, that, they I didn't, haven't seen those down there in, I've only seen them once. Yeah, I remember a long time ago they used to have those weird looking things. But, I don't know, I guess they did away with them. You'll have to, uh, uh, crap, son, bake my bone. <sighs> I'm gonna I'm gonna shove the picture right here, and you can give it to it in the Firefox because that's the only way I know how to send a picture. Uh, I just went and, and since I haven't been there since I saw that this morning, I got a picture of it. Oop it. And we'll get a load of this. Uh, apparently, this just this just got put out by uh, thehill.com. Warren opponent. Only a fake, only a real Indian can defeat a fake Indian. A Republican Senate candidate in Massachusetts on Wednesday poked at incumbent Senator Elizabeth Warren, Democrat from Massachusetts, remarking that only a real Indian can defeat a fake Indian. Shiva, I can't even begin to pronounce this guy's last name. Ayadori. Yadari, crazy I think foot. That's how it's pronounced. I'm not sure. Uh, and an, an Indian American who was running for the GOP Senate nomination in the Senate, in the state, sorry, made the remark on Fox Business, Varney and Company, while discussing his bid. Well, I think only a real Indian can defeat a fake Indian, he said. The Republican candidate said he previously sent Warren a DNA test kit on her birthday and was very sad when she decided to return the gift. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to going against Warren. You know, I know how these elites work. I know I can defeat her, he said. Other Republicans, including President Trump and former Senator Scott Brown, Republican from Massachusetts, have mocked Warren over the past claims of Native American ancestry. The Washington Post fact checker declined to provide a rating of Trump's attacks, sarcastically calling Warren Pocahontas. In 2016, the Post noted that there is no official documentation of Warren's claim to be of Native American descent, based on family stories she heard growing up and advised its readers to look into it on their own and decide whether Trump's attacks over Warren's background have merit. Adyari has focused his run for, for Senate around Warren's claim to Native American ancestry, including the tagline, Defeat Hashtag Fake Indian Elizabeth Warren on his campaign website. God, I hope he does beat her. Seriously, I hope he beats her. Oh, come on. I mean, you got people out there that are allowed to be dogs and piss on fire hydrant. If she wants to be an Indian, let her be an Indian. <laughs> Give her a feather. You know what I mean? To put in her hair and some beads. And she'll be good to go. Out. Peace out. She'll be good to go. What the hell is this? Peace out. Is that what it is? It's either that or cut. I, I see a lot of people when they take selfies, they're doing that. It's like, what the hell are you doing? 
backward pistol? It, you know, you ever see people go like this? They, they take the peace sign and they, they thump their chest with it? It's like, peace out. <laughs> Stupid. Me, yeah. I just go, peace, power, okay? Shit. <laughs> Go play, and I do that to the to the liberal to the liberals. Ooh. My mama would. I do that to feet. liberals. <laughs> I figure it like this: Why not? You know, it's like, hey, so you're a liberal, right? Well, peace, power, okay. Go play. Right. Tell them to go play in the fucking freeway for personally, but eh, what are you gonna do? I don't know mm. how I could have got sunburned. Now I got a, I got a, a question for you, Mike. What's that? With um w that that with that Oregon governor getting ready to sign gun confiscation over there, which is worse than what the, the, anything the New York State Act could be. How long do you think it would be before other liberal states decide to pull a stunt like this? I think they're going to wait and watch because when when they make, if that thing really sets in, the NRA and the Second Amendment Foundation is going to go after it. There's going to be lawsuits because that's completely against the Constitution in many different ways, including taking away due process. You can't take away people's property like that and take away their rights, their gun rights and everything else without due process. And this is all based on an accusation that somebody can come in and just say, you know, with no proof that this that person is be held, held accountable. Yeah. Their false report. Yeah. So I, I don't see how this can stand I, I, at all. It almost sounds like bullshit, man. I, you know, it does. No, but it's actually—they—they they're, actually—they're actually the governor. They're waiting for the governor's signature on this. I, I, yeah, I know, George. I'm the same. In any other reality, I would be like, "That's fucking bullshit. That's fake news. That's go go fact check that shit." Because you know, what, like what Mike said, it goes against the the uh, Second Amendment. It's accusation, okay? Now I could say. Oh, I seen this and I seen that. I seen the other thing, right? Well, if the cops find out that was full of shit, guess what? I get charged with filing a false report. Yeah. I gotta go to fucking court. I gotta pay a fucking ticket. Right. The story's legitimate, yeah. and that's what they're following. Well, for for those of you in, who are in the chat room, there's Breitbart's take on it. Now, hold on, it's also posted on Guns.com as well. I'm not saying it's not true, George. I'm just saying, in any other reality, I'd be like, that, that sounds so much like bullshit because it's so illegal to do That's under what? our current law and That's under our current right. constitution. Unless I didn't get the memo, where we're not we're not running under the constitution anymore. I don't know. Uh, you and me both, because they said Washington already passed it last year, and I didn't hear a damn thing about it. Nothing. Of course not. Of course not. Yeah. You know, I mean, I kind of think she's a, she's a mousy old little gal with thread, man. Hanging by a thread. All right, but but she but here's Trump. the thing. This, this is this this was put out six days ago by Breitbart and others, including in the limited to guns dot com. Now, Oregon lawmakers passed legislation co-sponsored by Senator Brian Bockwist, Republican from Dallas in Dallas, Oregon, that allows a judge to issue a an ex parte ruling for the confiscation of an individual's firearms. Ex parte. Wow. The I bill The bill is SB seven nineteen and it has now passed Oregon's House and Senate. It creates an extreme risk protection order, which forces the subject of the order to hand over all firearms as well as his concealed carry permit if he possesses one. NRA ILA reports, based on a California law enacted in 2014, SB 719A, 
would create a so-called extreme risk protection order or, or ERPO that could be obtained by a law enforcement officer, family member, or household member in an ex parte hearing to deprive someone of their Second Amendment rights without due process of the law. The ex parte aspect of the law means the bill does not require the gun owner to be present for part of the hearing in which the judge decides whether guns should be taken from him. On April 18, 2017, Breitbart News reported that Bachwist was pushing this confiscation bill and he emailed Breitbart News to suggest the bill simply puts forward a law that is popular in, the other, in other gun control states. For example, Bachwist informed Breitbart News that a, that a similar law passed the voters in Washington by 70%. Bachwist also told Breitbart News that SB 719 is not confiscation. However, the language of SB 719 is quite con confisc confiscatory. It says, requires court to order respondent to surrender deadly weapons and concealed handgun license within 24 hours of service of initial order and immediately upon service of continued or renewed order provides for law enforcement officer serving order to request immediate surrender of deadly weapons and concealed handgun license and authorizes law enforcement officer to take possession of surrendered items. If a requirement for immediate surrender of firearms and concealed carry license upon issue of an ex parte ruling, bear with me, I got to catch my breath. <clears throat> yeah, uh, immediate surrender of firearms upon an ex parte ruling is not confiscation, then what is it? The Times quoted Bachwist defense of the confiscatory bill on the Senate floor saying everyone wants to promote this as a gun bill. It's not. Really? So, why does it have that language in the bill? Hmm. Now let's see here. Let me go back to that for just a second. To that to that Breitbart piece because I want to. I want to. I want to get that uh, particular item um, where it talks about what it what the bill is. It says requires court to. Order respondent to surrender deadly weapons and concealed handgun license within 24 hours of service of initial order. Sounds like confiscation to me. And yeah. immediately upon service of continued or renewed order. Provides for law enforcement officers serving order to request immediate surrender of deadly weapons and concealed handgun license and authorizes law enforcement officer to take possession of surrendered items. If that that sounds like gun like gun confiscation to me, across the board. If this fucker signs that, oh, the NRA is going to have their is going to have this this fucker's hands in a in, in the cookie jar for trying to take away the the rights of the people under the Constitution. I agree with Mike. It's, this is the NRA is going to have going to have him for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. And in between meal snacks included. Yeah, that's why you know I can't even phantom it. Like I said, it, you know, we drove around even as teenagers with a gun rack behind us and our rifles. I mean, it, even when we went to school. So this is just blows me away. I don't know how they're going to get it to pass. Well, it's already passed the Oregon House and Senate. Now it's just waiting for the governor's signature. Oh, that's, that's the mousy little brown-haired dark glass or glasses. I'm trying to think. I was looking at that first article. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a she. I thought it was a he. <laughs> you can't do that. Now, according yes, to I can. 
now iHeart dot there's a there's an a, an article that came out one day ago <coughs> how the Oregon governor is preparing to sign the gun confiscation law. And there is a um, let me see if there's a, a, a what is now, according to this, and it's a YouTube video, Governor, God damn this thing. I hate the way YouTube changed things. Oregon yeah. governor preparing to sign gun confiscation law published July 10, 2017. A, 2A News video post. Oregon Senate Bill 719 will allow legally owned guns to be confiscated from their owners simply by filing a hearsay complaint against the gun owner. And Billy, we lost Billy on the phone. Guess he's mm -hmm. going to sleep. The petition. Yeah, I'm starting. It's midnight here, almost midnight. Oh, fuck, it's almost three in the morning over here. I'm, I'm starting to drift again. Yeah. But I put so, a couple of things in the chat room, though, also. So interesting, is including a video. I never saw Kim Young, whatever, number two, his wife. I didn't know he was married. Yeah. Did, you, did you know that? Yeah. I didn't know that. Shit. He kept with him. Sorry, go ahead. He kept with he her hidden. I guess he did. She wasn't allowed out in public. Why well, didn't get a good look at her? Is she ugly or what? Why is he hiding her? I don't know. And then Kid Rock running for office. Well, yeah, he actually confirmed that he's running for office. There's another one, like uh, the guy in Peekskill there, Mike. Who? Oh. You know. Noodle? Noodle. Noodle, yeah. I guess he's oh, following Noodle's uh, uh, direction there. Uh, what is it? I'm famous. I'm a musician, so I'm going to run for office. Does that make you qualified? Oh, I'm a movie star. I get to run, run for... I don't know what the fuck is going on. Is that it? Name recognition? That's all of a sudden, the minute you get name recognition, then you feel that you get a chance for... Winning an election? I guess. Wow, and hard to believe he's actually that any woman would have the, would have the the breast colonies to marry that shithead. I yeah. wouldn't want him laying on me. And look at how the North Koreans clap. You ever notice that? It's like they're really like excited. When they have the hands up close to their face. I guess that's a traditional communist way of clapping. I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's almost comical the way they all clap they're, like that. They're, they're basically forced to applaud. They're, 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 do you think they really want to applaud this fuckhead? No. They, they gotta, yeah, they're probably afraid. You better clap fast because otherwise he's going to watch the video. You are charged with not clapping fast enough. <laughs> off, with, off with his head. It said something about a special guest speaker or special guest at that dinner i don't know who the guest was i didn't watch the whole thing i wonder if it was some american polit no, not politician hollywood type or something who knows you got me uh, I, I, i'm not even going to try to venture a guess well listen me. everybody it's uh, going on 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm actually starting to fade myself, so I'm going to go right. to bed, or at least attempt to go to bed. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. So, y'all be good. Be cool. We'll do it again tomorrow night. I'll, I'll be on here, Mixler and YouTube, at 11 <laughs> p.m. Eastern Time. I'm not going to deal, deal with Blog Talk Radio for tomorrow night. No sense in doing that tomorrow night. I'll do it the same way tonight. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow night is tonight. Or All right. Something That's like funny. that, anyway. All right. All right. So, Boyd, everybody, I'll see you later. All right. Catch you. All right. All right. Long night. We'll catch you on the flip side, people. Peace. Peace.
out. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night, everybody. And for for and as for me, for the comments I've made, that's the way it is from my perspective. I'm George oh, Simser. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. We will be back on Mixler and YouTube tomorrow night for the Thursday night edition. At 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, right here on Mixler and YouTube. So don't you dare miss it. Until then, I'm out of here, folks. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to Firefox News Online here on Mixler.com. Be sure to join us on our regular broadcast on blogtalkradio.com slash firefoxnews-online. Monday through Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Firefox News Online is a production of Firefox News Online Productions. Any rebroadcast, transcript, either in whole or in part, without the express written permission of Firefox News Online Productions and its owner, is expressly forbidden in copyright 2017, all rights reserved. Firefox News Online. Fair, balanced, and always responsible.